Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tim Ross. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm looking right in this camera. I hope you today are doing well. I hope you're better than you were yesterday. You are going to be even better tomorrow if you don't give up today. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, grateful for the opportunity that we have. Shout out to all the basement dwellers. Shout out to my YouTube fam, the Press B members, our basement dwellers, our basement promoters. Um, we ain't out here if it's not for you. And what's crazy is um, now anytime I'm out and about, it's almost never um, uh, an, an, an opportunity uh, that is missed for somebody to say hi, which is just dope. So I've seen, I've seen dwellers in the airport. I've seen them at restaurants randomly in Delaware. Shout out to the couple I met in Delaware. That was just, we were at some Tex-Mex place in Delaware, which I don't know how Tex-Mex got all the way up to Delaware, but um, it worked. Them salmon tacos was popping. Um, listen, we're in for a treat today. Um, I have uh, a dear friend. He's a brother to me. Um, he's one of the most creative people I've ever met. Um, he is a self-contained fashion icon. Um, I'm saying it. He's not saying it. Uh, he's married to uh, a beautiful young woman named Abby. They have a plethora of kids. Um, so many kids, they're still making kids. Um, that's what happens when people are attracted to each other. They just keep having sex and making babies. So... Um, that keeps happening. Um, uh, he is um, the creative pastor. Is that the actual title? Uh, uh, it was. That was the first one. Okay. What, what is it now? What What is your What is your job description as of oh uh, as of eleven eighteen a.m. Eleven eighteen. Wait, I yeah, just yeah. got a text. Yeah. Just <laughs> exactly. No, I am. Which I don't even ever say this out loud. I don't think I'm the lead executive pastor. Okay. Of Transformation. Okay. Church. So, so this is the lead executive <laughs> pastor of Transformation Church. Um, honestly, uh, it takes. It takes some very uh, talented and capable and gifted and anointed people uh, to pull off um, and steward the move of God that's happening there. And I know transformation wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for you. So I would like to introduce to some and present to others my brother. <laughs> Charles Metcalf is in the building, ladies and oh gentlemen. Let's go! Wow! This we got Charles in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> we could be here till tomorrow, literally tomorrow. Like, oh my gosh, I am, I am. This is very surreal and grateful. I told you before we started. I said it feels like you find out your friend was Oprah. I was like, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I felt like, obviously we, we've, we've known each other for a while now and you're such an amazing friend. Like I cannot articulate how grateful I am just for you, just knowing you. And thank you, bro. Literally. I mean, we met, I knew, uh, uh, PM pastor Mike for a little bit and met you right shortly after. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. Since then my life has been completely different. So to be actually, we've been in the basement, but now we own the basement. Yeah. In yeah, the basement, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, very, yeah. it's very humbling. And so I'm just, yeah. Dude, wow. So, so the, this, so let's talk, let, I like when I get to talk to people that, that, that I'm already friends with. Right. Yeah. And, when when we say we've already been in the basement, it's because yeah. we've already been living with this philosophy, yeah, and this ideology, because that's what the basement really is. Yeah, it's absolutely. a it's a it's literally a lifestyle. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Um, when we say press B, we're basically saying, are you committing to changing your life? Yeah, thinking really. a certain way, acting mm -hmm. a certain way, walking a certain way, talking a certain way. Yeah, so it's like. Um, it's really cool when I get to have uh, uh, people like you on because, y you know, it's proof positive. This is the way I've always been talking. Oh, my gosh. I've always talked like I'm talking now. Absolutely. It's just that there's a hot mic. Literally. Like, the mic's hot. Literally, <laughs> when I when I look at stuff and people uh, through Reels or Instagram or TikTok, whatever, and I'm seeing what people are saying, I'm like, Yo, my friend been like this. Like y'all just found out, but this is like we. I remember the first conversation. I was like, "Oh my lord, he really just said this crazy." Okay, and then you just looking at me like, "Are you gonna be real or fake?" And I'm like, I have choose this day what you will do. 
I guess I'm gonna be fake for a little bit until I get comfortable. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how it really went. But yeah. no, I think you are, and it's something that's true of of our both dear friend uh, Michael Todd. That is now I see even being connected with you on a deeper level that has transcended through all of our relationships. That is, you are so you that it gives people permission to be them. Mm. And I've mm. never, um, I, and that's because, because that's the thing I've seen, your impact influence relationally with your friend circles mm -hmm. beyond that is not people that all look like you, talk like you, think like you, mm -hmm. but it is people that you have freed, not from being like them, but being like yourself. Mm. And I think I, I sat on you at your kitchen table as a 23-year-old, two-year-old church planter, which is a hilarious sentence <laughs> that we should probably talk about. But <laughs> but I remember sitting there and thinking like, wow, could you really, could you, it, you, I, you were another, but there's been few references in my life where I've seen people be themselves so much that it made me, thought, made me think like, maybe it is possible I can like really mm. be myself mm. like because i never felt safe to be myself and yeah. that was part of just my own personality and how i was raised and what i thought and didn't think and i think seeing you be you over the last six and a half years every day is like a if tim can do it i can do it mm. and it's very freeing for people it's like very freeing for a relationship to to be able to see someone just be themselves and yeah. so anyways yeah nah bro that's that's um <clears throat> Yeah, being comfortable in your own skin is incredibly important. Yeah. You know. Um, and inc incredibly rare, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't, well, I, we just don't live in a world um, that gives people permission Dang. Yeah. to be comfortable in their own bodies. Like, I'm just that's thinking about that right now. I'm like, that's sad. No, really. <laughs> like, yeah. people can't be comfortable with their own bodies bodies yeah. like this is the skin i'm in what i'm supposed to do with it and that's the thing and now it is you build a world where everybody is preventing presenting a version that somebody else wants mm. and really one that this is the word and you say it all the time but it's disintegrating people that's right like it's completely and that's honestly been such a part of my story like uh is growing up as like feeling like there was a version of me that was let me just go all the way there we in the basement so dad's Hated. black mom's white yep and that created the dichotomy from a little age because mm. at some schools i was the black kid and then mm. at other schools i was the white kid so it was very like it just created slow down <laughs> slow down let's go slow <laughs> this, we're not going anywhere this, this, it can get dark we'll, we'll be fine okay so how this is a very interesting conversation to have with somebody that's biracial yeah how young were you like at what age were you consciously aware yeah that like i'm black here yeah and i'm white there how how young were you when you realized yeah my daddy's black and my mama's white because yeah. that's not a no yeah when a kid is born they just like <laughs> That's how everybody is. These are my parents, right? <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. this is my normal. <laughs> yeah. So when when does yeah. that realization happen? Yeah. No, I mean it was young. I mean I wanna I wanna say it was five or six. Like I was aware, like because I grew up playing sports, and it, we moved also when I was young, and so there it was just very practical in environments where I was like, oh, I I don't how I it just saw the interactions and I more so was aware of how I felt in different places Understood. That's and good. what people went to me for like oh he's gonna be really fast like comments like oh you're probably really fast like mm. or oh you can jump really high or oh you're like blah blah like that was your black side yeah exactly <laughs> yeah just to be clear that was the, uh, um <laughs> and so I don't know what the comments were from my white side but uh <laughs> <laughs> you're but, gonna make it in life yeah. <laughs> You're going somewhere, buddy. Your credit score is going to be 780. I, I don't know if I may have not went on the white side on that one. We're just not getting around to that side. But uh, <laughs> but I, I remember oh feeling gosh. like, oh, man, like, and it was funny because I literally, I say it as a joke, but I grew up listening to Run DMC and Willie Nelson. Like, I, it was in Kudos to you. Like, <laughs> praise God. God. Like, uh, I remember... It was just, it was it. Like, I can rap all of Paid in Full with Eric B and Rakim, and I knew, like, oh, yeah, we listen to some country music. Like, just get, like, in my grandfather, my mom's dad, uh, Grandpa Lee, he was like Willie Nelson in my head. Like, you go to his house, and he just had a guitar, beer bottles everywhere, 
and he's like kind of out of his voice was super deep and raspy like mm. just class like he was like willie nelson and johnny cash mixed together and we would go like once or twice a year and he'd just sit there and be playing his guitar that's just like, awesome it was like what is happening <laughs> like this is the most all but then i go to school with friends and see at the white school you find like the one or two black people so then y'all just become a little pod oh absolutely like culture absolutely. and i remember sitting on the back of the bus with Jaden and discovering 808 and heartbreak y'all were at the back of the bus okay now I, <laughs> we were at the back of the bus what year is I, I 19 uh no <laughs> no but yeah i think that dichotomy early on was way more probably subconscious than it was overt but it very much created two versions of me yeah that was mm. like in certain rooms i'm this guy and in certain rooms i'm this guy and don't add in the layer of church like that i grew up as a pastor's kid and so there's that whole world that is like, okay, so there's the black version of me, there's the white version of me, there's a church version of me, and then there's the, I play sports, so, and I'm good at sports, so I'm popular in that circle, but also, like, I kind of want to be good in school, and, like, I like nerding out on stuff, but I don't think it's cool to be good in school and play basketball. Like, these are all these different narratives that are in my head that create six, seven, eight different versions with me that just, now I just am switching hats every room and mask every room I walk into. What did that cost you? Oof. It cost me being able to take a deep breath. It's like living from the age of eight to 24, three. <laughs> and then you get home and go, Wait, wait, who? And like right before we started, I just went. And I just sat back into myself. And it's like holding your breath and tap dancing at the same time. Hey, yeah, no, I don't look at porn. My dad's a pastor. Hey, no, yeah, I like, no, I don't like that. Like just tap dancing and hold your breath. Mm -hmm. Not for anybody else's other than my own <clears throat> internal narrative and which is becoming uh, uh, something that is important in my life now and no reference or picture. Correct. Like, so it's just like, I guess this is what we do. I guess everybody holds their breath. I guess everybody pretends like they're okay when they're not. I guess everybody says that they don't struggle with stuff that they actually do. I guess everybody is questioning like, Am I allowed to, can I say that and love Jesus? Can I like be a, like, and it created this dichotomy that literally followed me all the way up through being a youth pastor, pastor to where the super deep reality will unfold the story. But like led me to being curled up under my desk in the middle of COVID yep. wrestling with six different versions. Yep. Do I really like want to be a pastor? Like, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. cause there's this version of me that's a designer that lives in Paris and kind of sleeps with whoever who I want to and does whatever I want and has, hasn't accepted the reality of the call that's on his life. And so he therefore gets to live beneath his anointing and kind of releases the responsibility to be the man that he knows he is. And that's way easier than living up to the way, the succinct way to say it is when you downplay your call, you give yourself an excuse to require less of yourself. Mm. So there was all these different, and in all those versions of me, there was one version that knew who I really was, that knew that like what was in me, what God had called me to do, the man of integrity he had called me to be, the man that was comfortable in his own skin that was supposed to see the gift I didn't realize is I was a bridge. I, I, could, I didn't know I could be me and be in all those, diff, those six different rooms. I thought there were six different versions. But the gift of me is I am both. I'm black and I'm white and I don't have to choose. I thought it was I had to choose. So in all those different rooms, I was switching between the basketball player, but also I was friends with all the skaters who were weird and into art. And so like I would go to art class and we'd be doing stencils and it was like we were all best friends. And then I see him in the hallway and depending on who I was standing next to, it was like, ah, I don't know if I could talk to you because. Mm. And now I've realized like, oh, through friendships like yours, my wife being one of the central people in that, counseling all the things to realize like, no, the gift is you can be in all those rooms. It's how God made you to be able to go be in that room. So anyways, yeah. <clears throat> okay. 
hey guys <laughs> <laughs> to the basement. This is what happens when you've already been in the basement. <laughs> no, right? really. It, it, don't, it, it don't take no time to get in there. Like, we're going to do a cannonball <laughs> in the deep end of the pool. <laughs> it's the And I've realized it's the only way I know how to live. And so everything else feels weird. Like, it yeah, just, when this becomes your default. It's like, I don't know how to. People are like, how you doing? And I'm like, I don't know if you want the answer to that question. Like, I like because I don't have the good answer. Like, my <laughs> I have the true answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I have an have answer that is six layers deep. My so answer is not sanitized for public consumption. <laughs> exactly. That's what it's not. I was like, well, man, you know, I woke up thinking about this girl I saw. And so then I, then I had to pray about that. And then I was thinking, like, and so it, it becomes exhaust. Like, I, here's what it is. After experiencing what it is to breathe in and out normally, I can't hold my breath. Like, I ain't got time to be hold my breath. Once you take a full breath in. A full deep breath in, and that fills your lungs. You, yeah. you know my my internal narrative uh, when I was sexually abused at eight was uh, that vulnerability is dangerous. Mm. That's the narrative yeah. that I yeah. went through my life with. Right? Yeah. If if I tell the truth, um, my dad's gonna kill mm. my abuser. Yeah, my brother's gonna bury the body. My mother's going to be brokenhearted for the rest of her life. Wow. And so I'm, if I tell the yeah. truth, I blow up my whole family. Yeah. I'm eight. Dang. Wh who going to get me some groceries? <laughs> I need Captain Crunch. No. no, literally. You know like, what I mean? Like, I need Captain. Some, who's going to take me to Disneyland? <laughs> my daddy going to be in prison and yeah. my mama's going to be brokenhearted. And no, maybe she starts doing crack. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, you know what really. I mean? I don't. No. So, so vulnerability is dangerous. If I tell the truth, it, I blow yep. up the whole, I blow up the world. I blew yep. up my world. Yep. Yep. And so that's how I grew up. And then um um and then I I learned that transparency was powerful. Yeah. Um uh but transparency and vulnerability are two different things. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I got to the point of transparency and I was like it was it was like taking a three quarters mm -hmm. of a breath. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that feels good. That's yep. more I'm yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. Yep, I'm not. Ta I'm not. Oh, no, literally, I'm not in the Lamaze class. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> literally. You know, for my whole life. So I'm yeah. like, oh, man, my lungs are almost filled up. Yeah. And then I started doing EMDR, mm -hmm. and and we started like we started targeting like the yep. narrative, right? Yep. Yeah. And then we tar targeted the narrative, and we had this beautiful um, moment that. Um, I'm only repeating what my therapist said. Yeah. Don't ask me what it means because okay. I won't be able to elaborate. <laughs> right. But during one of the sessions, we were doing a pass in EMDR, and she goes, and then she asked me what what I thought about it, and mm. and I had changed the narrative. Wow. The scene of my trauma had wow. changed the epicenter of, it. and she goes, oh, "You just did a cognitive interweave, and I didn't even guide you into it." I'm like, I. I I don't. I don't know what this is. A cognitive interweave. I don't know what a cognitive interweave I've been is. Reading about this, <laughs> but I hadn't. Right? Yeah, because I don't know what no, that yeah. is. I would have never Googled cognitive interweave, <laughs> but I was able to somehow on my own do this yeah. cognitive interweave, and it changed my narrative. And wow. my narrative went from vulnerability is uh, dangerous to vulnerability is my superpower. Mm, yeah, and the subtext was. I am vulnerable. My 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 statement to myself mm -hmm. is, I am vulnerable at the expense of other people's comfort. Wow. Yeah. That's so real. If my vulnerability bothers you, mm -hmm. move around. Yeah. But what I'm not going to do no. is take. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. or even. Which is not a full yeah, breath. Yeah. I'm taking big, deep yeah. breaths. Yeah. I'm talking about everything as it pertains to me and how I've mm. interacted with life. Yeah. And I know that makes some people uncomfortable. Absolutely, We've had comments about, I think yeah. you go too far. You, you say too much. Yeah. This is wildly uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for you. Yeah. And yeah. you can skip the episode. Yeah. You can yeah. unsubscribe to the pod. Like, yeah. You don't have yeah. to listen. Absolutely. Um. But we're breathing deep over here. Mm -hmm. And and maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe in yeah. a year I'll change my mind and be absolutely. like, you know what? I did say too much. But yeah. for right now. Absolutely. <laughs> well, when you spent your whole life <laughs> sipping breaths. No. No. We ain't it doing don't. it anymore. Well, and, and that's the thing. The thought it just triggered uh, 
when it talks about breathing uh, is, you know, the, the, uh, one of the names of God we get is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And in the original language, it was more close to a breath. That's correct. And so it's absolutely correct. It's also where we get some of the roots of inspiration is this wind, this breath. And I think for me, I see it connected in so many creative uh, designers and art people, like just so many people that it feels like you're designing clothes and making art off of like a, like that's all the inspiration you had was, and you got it and it was beautiful. But like, it feels like, bro, if you knew, like you did that off of that little, if you could get a full, like that space is like, and that's, that's my thing is like, and once you take a deep breath, it's like you telling everybody like, wait, you're not, oh, you're not breathing. Like, let me show you. And the, the sad part of it is when you said vulnerability is your superpower and vulnerability is dangerous. Vulnerability is dangerous to your pride. Mm. It is, there is a level of danger to yourself because you, it's, it's dangerous to the version of yourself that you've painted to people that you maybe even created yourself that ain't real. Like we'd be making whole, I made whole versions of my life that God was like, I didn't ever say that you was going to do that, but that's, <laughs> and you mad, like, well, why didn't you? Yeah. And vulnerability is a, is a risk to perceived health and a healthy soul, but it is truth and life and oxygen to the best version of yourself Mm -hmm. and that's like there's a scripture in the it says it in the message but it says jesus came and showed us a new way to be human and i just feel like oof like that's what when i start breathing it feel like jesus taught me how to breathe yeah like i just i just feel like bro i I can't and, and and i'm not gonna sit up here and act like it wasn't him that Art. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit up here acting like I was just sitting around in the corner, like brother. I was up under my desk, going <laughs> like about to jump up off the top of a building, and I'm still here, and I'm married, and I love my wife, and I got kids. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take off running right now. Yeah, like yeah, you know absolutely. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. So, no, I, I love that you said that part because yeah, th- I am not a product of like, um, self reliance. And um, self-dependence and yeah. like I just pulled myself from my own bootstraps and I just said, Bro, I'm sick of, of this life and I'm sick of porn and I'm just going to do better because I feel like it. Bro, nah, the transformative work of the Holy Spirit in my life based on my relationship with Jesus Christ is why I am like Literally. I am, which is why I'm never going to not be loud about that. Yep. And I'm never going to dismiss that from my narrative. Absolutely. Um, I love the fact that this pod is reaching people that don't even believe in Jesus. Yes. And yep. I'll <clears throat> never not <laughs> remind you yep. Yep. that Jesus did this for me. I don't Absolutely. know what he did. I don't know how you got through it. <laughs> but you asked me. You asked me. There was only one brother yeah, that was starts, with me in there. It starts with that person. So, Absolutely. okay. So, I got some images in my head. But I yep. want to make this statement first about, um, about just these creative breaths because yeah. you're talking obviously I get pictures about everything and so I'm looking at I'm I'm, I'm going back to Genesis 1 yeah. the first thing we know about God is that he spoke yep. and, and this is a spirit but but he but, but, but he speaks <clears throat> speech takes breath yeah um, and he's creating for six days yeah. like showing off going going crazy like, like here's the thing that I don't <laughs> think people understand if he didn't stop on the seventh day, we'd never. <laughs> we'd be so overwhelmed. We'd <laughs> never, right? We're still finding species, still, right now. Like, up until this day. Like, we know more about space than we know about the ocean. Bro, get out <laughs> here. Like, we don't even know. Like, he's a show off. Show off. He didn't just make a bird he's like oh y'all like birds oh watch this this dude started <laughs> flossing <laughs> with species y'all think that was dope oh watch this oh. i'm gonna make some that can't fly can't fly there's some y'all ain't even seen before because of dinosaurs but you know it's whatever yeah I, I mean this dude like 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 he's a show off and 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 like the creative prowess is mm. you, you, you know yeah. it's it's our minds can't even comprehend it yeah and then on the sixth day he breathes breathed into man mm-hmm. like the breath adam drew in 
mm. is because of what God blew out. Yeah. And I knew he took a deep breath. Mm -hmm. So the deep breath yeah. that we get to, that you got to, that I got to, that yeah. we're encouraging everybody to get to, yeah. you can't get there without God. Nope. Ain't no way. Yeah. All right, so so here's a question I need to ask because I see everything. I'm I'm, I'm watching. Yeah. I'm watching little <clears throat> Charles be black and white, <laughs> and you know, go play basketball and and got some handles and and has some speed to go do a layup, and then can get straight A's in class if he wanted to. Yeah, and then go skate with the skaters, and then come back and be like, I was about to say something, but I'm I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> I was about ooh. Go ahead. Where was you? I, I, I could have said it too. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. So so like you were with the white kids and you were like, dude. And then you was with the black kids. You was like, nigga, please. Nigga, that's why I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, please. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. I, I could just see little kids. You, you know what I mean? Absolutely. With their language. That felt like a breath of fresh air when I found <laughs> friends. I could say the N word. Where I was like, Bring <laughs> Me and my daddy just been yelling at each other in the house. I ain't seen nobody in Kentucky. Though. So, anyways, that's Kentucky. a real experience. That's a real life experience. Oh yeah, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Lord, have mercy on my soul. High school was the first high school in like Kentucky at all. Like straight up, nineteen oh three. The logo for the school was a H for high school. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Like what's what school you go to? Bowling Green High. What what's y'all's? It's an H <laughs> for like high school. You get it? Like <laughs> like D high school. <laughs> D high school. You know? Like yeah. So I'm weak, bro. <laughs> so so. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! I'm looking at that H, and it just looks so purple, pitiful. Purple H. A purple purple H. H. We was the purples. I the purples. The color. It don't make no sense. We don't have to get into it, but you were just a color. Color. Like you weren't the, like the werewolves or the bears or sir, the, brother. We were the, pur the purples. <laughs> Bowling Green High School purples, boy. Gold and purple royalty. I, I feel <laughs> bad for your cheerleaders. <laughs> I don't even know how you cheer around. P U R P L E. Yes. No, I just made that up. I don't know what that was. I was about to say, fam. <laughs> they need. They needed to be like given a stipend if they. <laughs> uh, they I'm they just, was on contract. <laughs> they, they was. <laughs> They was on a short term. Cheerleaders was 23 years old, <laughs> acting like they was 16, getting paid $800 oh, a game. Because who's going to cheer for the purples? The purples. We got to pay for it. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I'm watching little Charles in my yeah. mind, um, you, you know, split yeah. off into six or seven versions of itself. <clears throat> and then um, obviously find Jesus at some point. Yeah. And understand what it is to take this deep breath. And then, but. And so, like, you know that mm -hmm. um, uh, you don't need multiple versions of yourself. You have one version that can go into all these rooms, but these other versions exist. Mm. So how do you go, Yeah, how do you deal with them? How did you deal mm. with those other versions? Yeah. Some of them were <clears throat> more obvious to, to kill. Some of them had habits that weren't healthy for my soul that were more obvious to pinpoint. And some of them were more external, uh, meaning like it, it, at some point it just got tired of like black and white brother. I, I ain't got time for do all like there were some that some of those external like uh, even in how I very bluntly like and this is funny because like I, I'm in fashion I love fashion now, but like it was practical to how I dressed. Like in mm. certain spaces, it was like I dressed in Gap Kids, and then the other one I like was in an Allen Iverson do rag and a velour jumpsuit and a spinner necklace. Like, so it was, <laughs> had had both outfits at the same time. Like, Gap Kids, like a, a, a Sears sucker, like baby blue shirt mm -hmm. and like an Allen Iverson jersey that was a 2X. So it just eventually got to the point where like, I'm just gonna wear this Allen Iverson jersey. Like, I just got tired of like, I just can't deal with that anymore. Yep. But what I realized is <clears throat> through the context of different events and relationships in my life, those versions would be like, yo, we still here. Like, mm -hmm. and they would almost knock mm -hmm. like, yo, yo, what's up? And so I think for me, uh, I moved, I remember moving to, I moved to Oklahoma my senior year of high school, uh, which was devastating to me. Like I was in Bowling Green. That's where I thought I was going to be, was dating a girl. And my parents were like, yo, we're moving. And I was like, who? 
Because <laughs> I turned 18 and like, you know, I thought I was grown. Mm-hmm. So we move here. I'm just mad. Like whole year I'm mad. Like that like here, sit, where is here? Uh Oklahoma City. Look okay. at Oklahoma City. We moved okay, to Oklahoma see. City. Mm-hmm. And uh like just on some like I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to be here. And everybody gonna know I don't want to be here. So at lunch, I walk in, sit by myself. Somebody come to sit down next to me, try to make friends. I get up and walk off, go sit mm. at another table by myself. Like, Petty. just like, literally, just try Like, just like, has no <laughs> tools to deal with the disappointment. So it's just like, I'm just going to be a jerk. That's how I deal with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you going to know I don't like you. Like, just dumb. Like, got nominated for best dress and was like, I don't want that stupid award. Like, just so, and, when, and actually wanted it, like, deep down inside. <laughs> Cared very deeply, but you weren't going to know that. Right, right, So, right. but... <clears throat> So I remember the first version was uh, I got really involved. I, I, I So we moved here for my dad to be a pastor at a church. We get involved. I just am going to the church and uh, a friend starts leading a small group at the church. And he's like, yo, you should lead a small group. And it was a group of sixth grade boys that w- was like, oh my gosh, it was insane. Which it's funny, pastor and grown men and sixth grade boys, it's actually pretty similar, but uh, <laughs> they're the same. They just got more money. But that's true. Uh, it's very true. But I remember learning, they were, they started asking questions that was like, you still think some of that stuff. Like, there's a version of you that doesn't know how to deal with your lust. Like, they're talking about, like, so what do I do when I like want to look at a girl's boobs? Like, I'm like, you look i mean don't look at them don't do uh like i don't have no tools and these six right boys are exposing the fact that i don't know what i'm doing like yeah, 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 yeah. and so it just made me like it's, slow down real quick mm. part of my interruption no you're good um but it made me think about the fact that um you can't take anybody where you haven't been yeah yeah right absolutely like um that's a big deal bro yeah um and there's a lot of people, fathers, yeah, mothers, mm-hmm. businessmen, yeah, pastors, telling people where to go, yeah. and they haven't been there. Yep. Yeah. Presidents. <laughs> Literally. Doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Lawyers. I mean, you got people telling you, do this, do yeah. that, go yeah. here, go there. Well, h- how do I get there? I don't know. <laughs> it's over just like it's kind of east you know that one house with the roof when you find that one make a left yeah yep dude that's that's sobering no and that was the small group was just platitudes and scriptures and uh you know god will be your strength and you know like just these random things that were, but no deep connection in my soul for how to do so it started making me either you gonna keep being fake and bound or you gonna just start opening up and i remember there were friends and people that were leading groups that started just i started being like yo what do i do with this like i don't know how to and what happened and this is this is the joint part of accepting that version of me that knew what i was called to is the group started growing like crazy so one semester we end up having to split the group when it got to like 20 or 30 you had to split it because it just wasn't it wasn't intimate in what they were trying to build And it, we got split five or six times, like grew 30 split, grew 30 split, grew 30. And I don't know nothing. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm 19, just like, invite your friends, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, and, and a leader comes up to me and he's like, we're at this like youth camp thing. And he's like, you, you got a group? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We split it. Like, you know, it's had to, it's had to, I was more so sad. Like I was trying to low key have a little, I didn't know it, but it's like, that would be like a miniature youth ministry. Like yeah, you yeah, got five times sure. 30, you got like a sturdy group of kids. Yeah. And he's like, yo, let's go to lunch. And so he, I'm in the middle of all these struggles that I don't know how to deal with, but also your gift makes room for you. And your anointing is there. And got, like, and so there's stuff happening, meaning like there's this gift that's on the inside of me that is, producing fruit externally yet i'm still dying on the inside and so it puts me in positions that internally my soul can't handle but externally my gifting can uh execute and so i become a youth pastor associate youth pastor at 19 based off of just like i get up at this conference thing my dad was speaking they're like you should introduce your dad i just grabbed the microphone start going talk for 20 minutes everybody's laughing blah blah blah. afterwards they're like do you want to interview to be an associate youth pastor and i'm like i guess i don't know like no but yeah and so <laughs> nobody i mean yeah mm-hmm. and so uh from that moment though that is when 
I saw the crippling effects of the version of me that wanted, there was the version of me that wanted to walk in integrity, but was scared to be honest, mm. that I was deep in pornography, that I was wildly insecure, that, and at the same time, knew God's hand was on my life, knew that I wasn't like these other people around me, but didn't have tools to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to grow a youth ministry and looking at porn the night before mm -hmm. and just don't know what to do. Like there's no, didn't feel safe enough to tell nobody. Mm -hmm. Felt like if I tell you, I'm going to lose my job because mm -hmm. I've seen friends tell you that they looked at porn and they're gone. Like there was no like, oh man, we're so sorry. And then the next one, they're like, you know, God's calling me to do something new. And it's like, no, you just weren't safe. Like, yeah. And I know that. And so that season, I remember there's a moment the guy who recruited me, it's like two years later, he comes to one of my nights and it was supposed to be this big night where we had all these people come, a ton of kids showed up and I had like no leaders cause that I was just all off personality. Like just like, I'm just loud. Kids thought I was cool. So they come, but ain't no leader want to help build this. Cause I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. All these kids come and uh, I'm crushed cause the leaders weren't there. And my, the guy, he's like, what's going on, man? And I'm like, and I just break down. Like this is after the night's over. I'm just weeping. Like, and he's like, what is going on? And I'm just telling him, I'm like, bro, I, I can't do this. Like I'm looking at porn. It's ripping my mind apart. My soul feels empty, but also I could read my Bible and a sermon jump out in two seconds. And I don't know what to do with that. Like, and that felt like the first three quarter breath. Yeah. That was like, you got to kill him. Yeah. And the only way I killed him was just to start talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Dude, so thank you so much for the gift of your vulnerability. Like you sharing that is, I know it's helpful. Um, <laughs> there are hundreds of thousands yeah. of men and women in the same type of situation. And I think, I think um, what the church has never been honest about is that um, you can perform at a very high level mm. uh, and be struggling yeah. with massive yeah. issues. Yeah. The, the, the way the church has tried to present it is like, if you do it, yeah, yeah, the Lord's going to take his hand off you. <laughs> yep. And yeah. like, he's never going to take his gifting away mm. from you. Yeah. Right? Mm. you the, he gave you a <clears throat> gift to communicate. He, he gave you a gift of revelation when you open his word. You're going to find a sermon. Yeah. You could have turned Pornhub off yeah. 30 minutes prior. Yeah. And you're going to get a sermon. Yeah. You ain't going to feel good preaching nope. it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Right? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. ain't going to feel good. No. Nope. The truth of God's word is the truth. Yep. Whether you yep. are living it or not. Absolutely. So you ain't going to feel good preaching it. And yeah. you know what you got to live with yep. as a result of it. Um, you know, everybody was so like, I'm going all the way back to like the beginning of the first kind of thing I heard, yeah. big scandal I heard yeah. in, in my, in my lifetime was with Jimmy Swagger, mm. right? Jim, yeah. Jimmy Swagger was sleeping with prostitutes mm. and running crusades yeah, with thousands of people there wow. and yeah. tens of thousands and, 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 and hundreds and thousands of people giving their life to Jesus. Wow. Then he was sleeping with prostitutes. Yeah. And so when he came out and said that, oh, you know, I've sinned and, you know, it's just this yeah. very iconic, you know, picture of him crying mm. in the camera and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And everybody's like, how could he? And yeah. all that going, oh, man, it's pretty easy. Yeah, very easy. <laughs> right? It's, 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 it's kind of easy. You, you, yeah. you, you disintegrated yourself mm -hmm. from what you do and who you are. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's how you can preach it and not live it. Yep. And um, it does come to an end. You never know when the end is coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the truth. Um, uh, but there is an end to it. And when that end comes, you have to either own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you have to grab a pickaxe mm -hmm. and dig deeper. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. And the, the thing with vulnerability and, and, and vulnerability that produces a true self-awareness to know where you are, what you're good at, not good at, what your weaknesses are. Um, me and Abby were having this conversation. <clears throat> and the reality is that uh, 
ignorance to your weakness feels like the stronger reality because you don't know. But self-awareness feels weaker because you're aware like I can't like it feels embarrassing. It feels like you're a small little kid again. If like the admitting of like I can't even really be around that girl because i'll like that it's, you want to be like no nah, it don't bother me like i can do it like but ignorance feels stronger but it's the weaker reality and vulnerability and self-awareness feels weaker but it's actually the firm foundation that you can stand on and so the only way that i found uh is to kill those separate versions is just to be honest like i cannot i was talking to a friend one time and they said you know you never cage a dog that's never bit anybody but you need to realize any dog backed into the right corner will bite somebody. Trust. And it's like, I just think like, oh, yeah, no, I can handle that. Like, I can do that or I can be around that or I can listen to that or I can watch that movie or I can have this or I can be texting that girl and not. And all this stuff that's like, no, you can't. Mm -mm. You can't do that. Mm -mm. You can't follow them. Mm -mm. You can't sit next to them. Mm -mm. You can't. There are certain personality types that mm -hmm. if I see you that personality type, mm -hmm. I know we gonna have to live like this. That's exactly because right. my personality is inclined to just like, woo, I feel yeah. safe. Like, yeah. and so that's been the thing for me is having to be vulnerable. And now being married seven years, going into our eighth year, it's like, let's go. Hey, listen, we're out here, man. Let's I love go. that girl so much. She's so beautiful. Oh my lord, I love you so much. I would not. She has been, and I'll break down crying right now. She has been the safest place for me to become the man that I never thought I could be. And one of the greatest gifts God has ever given me is a safe place for me to find out that that version you felt that was in you when you was playing basketball and you felt like man I could help bleed people and I felt it through all different avenues being married to her has been a safe place to fail to say hey I looked at porn and her reaction be so safe this is a thing we don't talk about in marriages is some men want to be safe and there is a balance and a reality of understanding the pain that that will cause your wife but also how my wife responds let me know lets me know if i can tell her again or not and her first responses was a hug mm -hmm. i love you so much mm -hmm. and i was like why are you hugging me right now like you're supposed to be mad you're supposed to like this is easier if you just are mad at me because that's how this is supposed to work i make a mistake you're mad and then it almost feels right but irrational grace makes you uncomfortable but it also produces the safety to realize that, like, well, that's not me. And I think whether you're married, whether you're not, finding and being someone that is a safe place for people to become, it has changed my life. And uh, that's been the biggest thing that let me know, like, you don't have to be all those people. Yeah. Like, yo, you can be you. Yeah. What, like, even things I do, thoughts I have, how I dress, like part of my personality and how I group, there were certain things I did just to see if you would accept me if I still did it. And every single time she was like, okay, I don't know why you're wearing that, but okay, let's go. <laughs> God, you look like a fool, but, but I love you. Come on, let's get in the car. And that was like, whoa, like I can, I can be myself. Man, that has been, and so now it's like, bro, I got Jesus. I got the Holy Spirit. I got that girl over there and these chickens we raising. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally the there's a version of me that from a kid, I always say this. I wanted to be since I was eight, since my little brother was born. I wanted to be a husband. I want to be a dad. Over like being it, I thought I was gonna be the next Allen Iverson. I thought I was good. Like I raced BMX and thought I was gonna be Mario Soto. I thought like there was all this stuff I thought I was gonna do. <laughs> but underneath all of that was like, I wanna be a father and I wanna be a husband. Like I could go to heaven right now mm -hmm. on some like I did it. Mm -hmm. Like I did it. And I found someone who I feel safe with. 
I found someone who I can say like, dang, I really messed that up. And moments where I straight miss her God. And she's like, I don't know if that's what God said. And I'm like, no, I think that's what he said. She's like, okay, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And then me be like, so I don't think that was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> that My that bad. that was. I would just like to go ahead. And yeah, <laughs> that that was not what he said. That's and, exactly right. And you did kind of warn me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> and her being like, "It's okay. I'll still follow you anywhere." Yeah. Even the process of people don't know the whole journey, but we we felt like we were supposed to step out from that ministry where I was a youth pastor, and the deep motivator of it was I had a lot of friends who didn't love Jesus but liked me, mm. but didn't feel safe in the church that I was at. Mm. And so I thought, well, I'm just going, we just going to make a church where you feel safe. Like that was the, and it was a lot deeper than that. There was yeah, a lot of, but that was yeah. the thing. It's like for yeah. all the people who don't feel safe, we're going to make somewhere safe. Yeah. One, I would have never done that without her. Yeah. She just has always had this. I feel like I probably looking at us, I would maybe present more this way, but she has it deep to her core where she legit is like, I can do anything. Like I can legit do anything. Like I remember she we first was dating and married. She was like she was doing wedding photography. She was like, I think I want to start booking weddings like around the world. I was like, I think I want to do a lot of stuff. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like we were shooting weddings in Tulsa. And she just put on her Instagram bio now booking worldwide. Brother, it was a month and a half. We was in Europe. Like, oh yeah, here in Iceland, just book it. So she just has that. So she was the safe place for me to be like, okay, we're gonna step out and start this church. And start the church crazy journey like first if we throw like these this interest night we think like 30 people showing up 150 people show up and we're like well i think we started a church we go through the whole process long story short we i meet pastor michael halfway through the process holy spirit says i, I will get into the details of the story but i'm getting to this point of where i come talk to you I feel like the Holy Spirit's saying, hey, you, you're you not doing this no more. Been doing it for a year. Had people new, moved from New York. Had $100,000 in the bank. Had 40 people through growth track. Signed a lease on a building. Like, we're launching this date. It's about to happen. Holy Spirit's like, no, you ain't. And I'm like, yes, we are. Like, because <laughs> I'm too deep in this right now. Right, like, right. come to your doorstep. Hey, can, can we just slow absolutely, down? Absolutely. And I, Sorry, I want I'm, you to pick up from right there. No, no, no. I yeah. just want to say that on that point right there. We're too deep in it now. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you how many people wow. have disobeyed God. That's the truth. Based yeah. on their own perceived momentum. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally yeah. will turn yep. around, yep. heard from the Lord and be like, mm -hmm. you should have told me this 20 minutes ago. Literally. Because I already <laughs> made a left. You know what I mean? <laughs> literally. And it's like, yeah. you cannot. No, that's the truth. That's allow a so hundred grand in the bank. Yeah. 40 people through growth yeah. track. You know yeah, what I'm literally. saying? You can't, people moving no. from, the, like, yeah. whenever the Lord says mm. stop, yep. you got to stop. Absolutely. And whenever he says go, yep. you got to go. Absolutely. If you look at metrics and bank accounts yeah. and momentum yeah. and followers and yep. this and that and the other, you yeah. ain't going to. No, not at all. That'll mess you up. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, and that was the struggle where we've done this and blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, Pastor Mark, he had the presence of mind to be like, let's go. I'm going to call my friend Tim. I was like, okay. We call Jesus. I don't know. We need somebody. <laughs> we need somebody, brother. <laughs> I'll talk to anybody right now. Uh, <laughs> I'll be at the gas station. Like, so I'm, I've got this thing in my mind. God's really talking to me. Uh, oh, my God. We pull gosh. up to your house. Just a Holy Spirit moment. And we come to the, I come to the realization that, like, bro, you got to do, there's no option. Like God, you stepped out uh, now, I would say it in crazy faith to do this and you can't act like you don't use that muscle. Like, and that's a lot of stuff that happened. People take the faith step to start something, but you can, it's not a card you swipe once and then put back in the pocket. Like faith. And it's like, all right. It's not like a Metro card. Like you get a Metro card and then you get like, you just buy one fare and then you throw the card away. People buy one fair of faith and be like, whoosh, whoosh, used it in 1996, and we good. It's like, oh, no, you got to reload that boy. Or you just got to get the one that just automatic. Like, And so for me, it was God saying, yo, you, you're going to have to trust me again. Like, I know you had to trust me 13 months ago to quit your job and just be out here saying we starting a church. But, like, you don't just get to do that once. Like, this is a constant. And so that was what he was like, either – you gonna, so you're going to have the faith to step out when it feels dope to you. 
because that's the reality other people don't talk about is ego will have you trying to follow god in some good motives and some selfish motives for sure like being able to say like yeah i'm the lead pastor of eden how do you 23 yeah I felt some type of way. Yeah, like sure. that felt that fulfilled that little sixth grade boy that yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that was like, it was kind of dope and it's kind of working. Like we've had two events, 200 people coming. Like we like, and I'm getting to preach and people are talking about, wow, you such a good preacher. Why wasn't they letting you preach at the lap? Oh, well, you know, like we're here now, you know what I'm saying? Honor <laughs> that season. Like <laughs> being like on hey, the inside, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, 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 yeah, 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 we're good. Yeah. And come to that decision. We have to obey God. I'm in Dallas. Drive home sit we was in a studio apartment and i sit down on the bed and i'm like babe i gotta tell you something and she sits down and i just start bawling and i'm crying through the whole story of what god's done in the last 48 hours and you know i know we started this thing but i feel like blah blah blah, blah. and she literally just i stopped talking and she's quiet for a second and she says right before i sat down the holy spirit said to me whatever he says trust him it's me and so and she said that and she said so if it's what you feel like god told you to do I'm with you. Those four words, three words if you hyphenate it, I'm with you. That's what I that's all I was that's all I needed from the time I was six. Mm. I'm with you. I'm with you. Not like I'm with the decision because some people are with the decision you made. They're with what you're, what you're with, or they're against what you're against, or they you just have common enemies or common visions. She said, I'm with you. And that picture of Jesus mm -hmm. through my wife mm -hmm. has become the anchoring reality of our lives is realizing First of all, God was the first one to say that to me. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Now I have a safe place in my wife that says I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And right before we record this podcast, we was up till midnight with some of our friends saying, hey, I just want you to know I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Don't need nothing from you. Mm -hmm. Don't don't care about all this. Like, mm -hmm. this is dope. But like, I am with you. Mm -hmm. And I think, man, if if that seeing how that changed my life. That's all I want to do now for my friends. Yeah. That's all I want people to know is like, bro, there's somebody who's with you. Yeah. Like his introduction, you shall call him Emmanuel, God with, not around, mm. not God who can see you, mm. the God who sees you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sees you. Mm. He knows you. But for me, he's with me. Mm. Like he, I can feel him just standing behind me with his hand on my shoulder. Like you're good. Just both hands like anchoring me. That. It just, it changes how you live. Yeah. And it changes this comfort that is like, if he's with me, I'm not concerned about who's not and who is. Absolutely correct. Because sometimes who is make you feel some type of way. Yeah, for I sure. I know so and so and they yeah, both yeah, 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 yeah. It's if he is with me. That's right. I'm good. Yo, um... Is it tomorrow? I don't know how long we've been talking. I don't it doesn't know. matter. <laughs> I just want to stop I and say, this. Abby... Thank you for not running away from this kid. Thank you. Listen, um, As you were talking, I was, uh, and this is an emotional moment, I'm, I'm, and I'm an emo, so my tears will follow yours in, in, a, in a couple of minutes, but I, I'm literally sitting here thinking, Charles, every person in the world wants to know yeah. that if I tell you the truth, mm -hmm. will you still be with me? Yeah. If I tell you the truth, Will you run yeah. from me or will you run to me? 
And I think the reason why people run to drugs, run to promiscuous sex, run to alcohol, run to a PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything ain't got to be like no. the big. Run to a successful job. Yeah, run to a successful job. It's because they don't think they can run to a person. And still be loved yeah. if they told them the truth. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I'll be married to Juliet 24 years on May 1st. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that girl is like my, she could have ran from me. <laughs> I gave yeah. her a lot to run from. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's be honest yeah, yeah. about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and 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 it's not one sided. There yeah. she gave me some stuff to run from too. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta be committed to the vows you made. Absolutely. Now I'm not talking about somebody that don't want to do the work. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not talking about you telling Abby for a decade straight, I looked at porn, 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 I looked at porn. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nah, fam. Yeah. Right, right? I'm going to hug you the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Bro, brother, he going to catch his hands. You keep But I ain't hugging you 10 times in a row, fool. Give me your phone. Literally. Literally. I'm going to give you a bag full of quarters. Yeah. And you're going to find the only two pay phones left in all of Tulsa. And that's where you're going to be calling me from. Literally. That's hilarious. You know, you're going to be calling me from a landline for the rest of your life. <laughs> so so, so changes have to yeah, be made. absolutely. But people got to know that you're going to be with them while they're changing. Mm, yeah. yeah. Are you going to be here while I'm changing? Yeah. While I'm growing? Mm -hmm. While I'm, you know, figuring things out? Yeah, yeah. And, man, that's a huge... That's a huge thing for relationships, not just yeah. maritally, but no, relationally. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like, the, I, I've, I, I was talking to um, one of my friends. I've known him since he was a teenager, and I've been mentoring him for a while. And he was like, um, I, I didn't, I was afraid that when I told you mm. the truth about this, the, yeah. this vulnerable thing I, that he shared with me, he was like, I was afraid you were going to distance yourself from me. Wow. And my response to him was, uh, I want to clear this up with you right now because yeah. I never want this to be an issue ever again. Yeah. I want to expose the devil. Yeah. I don't want him throwing a seed in your mind. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you my philosophy on this. Mm -hmm. The only time I'll ever distance myself from anybody that I love, mm -hmm. Juliet, my kids, yeah. family and friends, yeah. is if they can't own what they did. Wow. Yeah. I can't fool with nobody. Yeah. yeah. No, that's real. That can't call a spade a spade. Yeah. If you don't know you messed this up. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot fool with you. Yeah. Absolutely. If you can own it. Yeah. I can rock with you. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. It's the reason why David kept the kingdom mm -hmm. and Saul lost it. Yeah. No, that's real. It all came down to ownership. Yep. That's so real. 100%. It, it wasn't that they, they <clears throat> messed up. Yep. It was that when I did. I was like, that was me. Yep. I did that. Yep. And here's how I got into it. Yep. Here's why I did it. Da, da, yep. da, da, da. I own it. I fall That's on so the real. sword. I'll roll around. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. I'll put myself yep. in the jail cell. Yep. I'll yep. throw the key in the, you know, <laughs> out the window. Yeah. But if you can't own it, I can't deal with you. No. Because so that real. means you're a danger to to yourself and others. Yep, absolutely. You're going to do it again. Absolutely. And if you make excuses about it, not a, so that's the only. No, that's so real. I don't, I can deal with anybody's failure. Yep. As long as you can say it was a failure. Not me saying it, <laughs> you saying it, right? <laughs> absolutely. Psalm yeah. 51, if yeah. you don't know how to do this, go yeah, to yeah, Psalm yeah. 51. Yep. Against thee and the only have I sinned. Yeah. Right? Like yep. David, so you know good. what? I'm about to read it. Read it, absolutely. How about we just read it? Let's open the book. Because that joint, is <clears throat> when I tell you it's <clears throat> it's right. Absolutely. It's like this is the blueprint of how to apologize mm -hmm. to both God and man. All right. Here we go. And you can see I had a whole thing tatted. Yep. The whole the whole <laughs> thing is tatted. I don't 
We I don't, don't play games. Yeah, I don't play games with that one. I'm like, let me we, get this whole thing. This ain't the first time we cracked the book. And I and I put it in pink. I have different markers for different things. I put it in pink, and pink is like anything that's like love or mm, affection, yeah. connection. Because I think it takes love to tell the truth. That's the truth. That's good. I, yeah. I, I don't think you repent to anybody if you don't love them. Yeah. Right? You, yep. you, you ain't sorry you kicked the dog in the face yeah. if, if you hate the dog. Yep. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeesh. So if, if you pee in the, in, in the, in the fish tank, yeah. like, like, and, and you're like, yeah, take that fish. Sorry, Nemo. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, if you don't know that was wrong, <laughs> what are we doing, right? So, so here's what David writes. Um, uh, he says, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. There's ownership already. Yeah. My sins. Yeah. Wash me clean from my guilt. Whose guilt? My guilt. Purify me from my sin. Verse number three. For I recognize my rebellion. That's it. It haunts me day and night against you and you alone have I sinned. Yeah. I have done wrong. I have done what is evil in your sight. So here's the thing about this part that I mm -hmm. love. I have done evil in your sight. Mm-hmm. It's evil because you said it was evil. That's it. I may not even think it's evil. That's it. That's Before it. finding Jesus, I did not think promis promiscuity was evil. No. Yeah. Before finding Jesus, I did not think pornography and masturbation was evil. Yep. But I have done evil in your sight. You yep. call it You call it evil, I got to agree with what you say about it, right? Yep. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from my from the moment my mother conceived me, but you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Yeah. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Give back, oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins, remove wow. the stain of my guilt, create in me a clean heart, oh God, renew a loyal spirit within me, do not banish me from your presence. And don't take your Holy Spirit from me. The rest of it is just yeah, uh, beautiful That's stuff. Beautiful. But but I, I just think that um, when when you start taking ownership of stuff, mm -hmm. people have a huge amount of capacity to forgive yeah. someone that knows they are wrong. Yep, yeah, absolutely. It's just hard to deal away. Uh, uh, deal with the person mm -hmm. who gaslights. Yep. It's like, well, I only did it because of you. <laughs> Remember that argument we had last yeah, night? Yeah, yeah. You drove me into the arms of that other person. Bring it out here. You was gonna do that regardless. Like, yeah. Okay, so so we had an argument. Mm. You got in the car the next day, swiped your credit card. Yeah. At the Hampton Inn, got a room. Called somebody to meet you there, and it's my fault. Get out of here, bro! All that work in logistics, you done turned into your own administrative assistant, and you done booked the room and swiped the card and wildin'. What are we talking about? And you gonna try to gaslight and said I did that to you? Get out of here, bro! Nah, fam. Yeah. So that's the only people I can't deal with. No, absolutely. Well, you know what? Ministry got tough, and no. And it's if you work for the if you work for FedEx, if you you could have a tough day at FedEx. Literally, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. So let's not blame it on ministry. No, no. Doctors got it rough. Yeah. You know what I mean. Reporters yeah. got it rough. Absolutely. Like like don't act like we are somehow mm -hmm. in this like bubble of like the ministry is just so. Uh, if you understood the depths of what I was trying and have to go to hospital visits, hospital visits does not equating you boning your admin. <laughs> Uh, I just wanna no, yeah, just wanna the, clear up. You know the what I mean? Math ain't math on that one. The math ain't math. <laughs> that's, the, look, you were doing a lot of counseling yeah. sessions, and then you slept with your deacon's wife. Yeah, I just want to let that. You know, she started coming to me in private and just kind of sharing her heart, and then one thing led to another. That's not how penises and vaginas work. No, one thing can't lead to another, and a penis wind up in a vagina. No, one sir. thing can lead to another, and you could get stabbed. <laughs> I've seen that happen. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we had a dice game. One thing led to another. And homie, cut me open. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I'm saying? I, you know, we were in Next a bar. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next, you know, uh, we were in a bar, and then one thing led to another, and I got cracked over the head yeah, yeah, with yeah. a with a Heineken. You, you, you know what I mean? One thing led to another, and then I was really in a deep conversation. Like it's like, no, nah, brother, that's one not thing it. leading into another does not mean no a penis not. leading into a vagina. That's all I'm saying. That's been my experience. My experience as well. So um, I, I just think. I, but but if we don't if we don't own our own narrative, you yeah. can't heal from what you don't reveal. I've said That's this it. time and time absolutely, again. Absolutely, you cannot heal from what you cannot reveal. And mm -hmm. if you don't get it in your mind that you yeah. know what, if I don't expose this now, yeah, I am going to be trapped. Yeah. With a secret that I don't want for the rest of my life. Yeah. Now I might not want to share that secret because yeah. I don't want you to run from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at some point. Freedom has to be more important yep. than the person you love running from you. Literally. And at some point, if you don't reveal it now, subconsciously, you realize there's only one way out of this. And it's just to blow the whole thing to the moon. Oh, dude. And like you just there's this subconscious narrative that's just like the only way out of here is I've built so many lies. I've built so many walls. I can't remember who I am in what room. Like I just got to. And that's the thing for me that um, even this, like, yeah, just talking to friends in this next, I feel like, wave of people who are leading and making, have influence and all this stuff is like, bro, now the testimony now for me is not uh, cultural relevance or impact or influence. Everybody got influence. Everybody got followers. Facts. Everybody, like, Facts. this ain't like, oh, they know somebody famous or they, you know, no, but like, cool, bet. We've seen that before. Yeah. But we ain't seen somebody be the same person for 50 years. We ain't see you come into this and your wife be by your side 30 years later. Yes, sir. We ain't seen nobody come into this and, wow, God, like, they stepped into that space of culture and made impact. And then we not see you on the cover of what like and this is the thing for me like i'm talking to my friends and this has nothing to do with the people of their story it's me realizing that like okay so now the goal is not when people start finding out or i start getting opportunity that's not the goal the yeah. goal is when all that happens yeah is me being able to sit down with you and saying i'm not tim this is the same tim yes yeah, like right. he been the same since that's the win now that's like exactly right. forget Oh wow, we're trying to impact and change culture. Blah blah blah. Okay, dope. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. But like, I'm trying to last, and my kids say like, I love my dad. Yo, bro, this is the long game, fam. <laughs> like, get this is out long of game. Here. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, bro. So. Yo, so so to that point, so um, one of my dear friends, Dan Leanne, mm -hmm. uh, he he's uh, born in Australia, lives in South Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Asian descent. It's crazy. You yeah. talk to him, and it's like <laughs> this is an what Asian is dude with a. Australian accent with a southern twang it does not match anything are we, are we in a dream right now this yeah, is yeah, matrix, yeah, so. yeah yeah what is happening right now so uh Dan is a, a very strong Asian man mm -hmm. and uh 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 we we every time we talk to each other mm -hmm. uh inevitably 98 percent of our conversations end like this hey bro let's just get old together mm -hmm. yeah still be married to our wives with kids who love us mm -hmm sitting in a rocking chair reminiscing on all the things god gave us permission to do that's the goal fam bro the goal ain't secure the bag yeah no <laughs> absolutely the goal ain't a race to a million followers yeah you know what i mean yeah we got to a hundred thousand subscribers let's get to a million yeah subscribe 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 <laughs> click and subscribe Click and no 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 Nah, Smash fam. that like button. Like, Smash that like button, here. fam. Get out of here. Peer, 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 peer. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. The, the, the goal is Absolutely. to get old, still be married to the wives of our youth, mm -hmm. with kids who love us, sitting in rocking chairs, wow. reminiscing on all the things God gave us permission to do. Dude, that's the goal. And I like, oh my gosh. Like, and this is for all of the people in my generation and age and stage that don't think long-term commitment is sexy like get the heck out of here like people who just running around and i let me just say this i get it there's some weird dope version of yourself that i think it's cool that you done slept with everybody but your soul knows you ain't safe with anybody hey bro i want you to talk to your generation for a second this has never happened on any pod that i've been on in yeah. my life yeah but i have to go pee <laughs> 
So <laughs> I'm gonna let you talk. <laughs> All right. To your whole generation. Absolutely. While I go Let's take rock. a piss. Let's rock. Let's do it. We here. Welcome to the basement. Uh, <laughs> you be true. Speak Hi, on. Charles. What's up, man? You, we sir? here. I'm well. How are you? I was waiting for you to pick up that microphone. He was like, somebody Let's save me. <laughs> Let's rock. He said, uh. Charles, yeah. so you, we won't hear any pee. <laughs> yeah. So since we have some time Turn to kill. Turn the faucet on. Sorry. We have some time to kill. You said your other life would be in Paris. <laughs> yes. Being a designer. Yes. But... But you're doing designy stuff now, right? What? Yes. So this is the thing. When you submit to God, literally delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So the the, the thing that the enemy had me tripping on is that thou had to uh, die and you never see that stuff again. What had to die was my pride to think that I knew what was best and I knew the best path to get there. That's what had to die. But those desires, who I am, was authentic to who God created me to be. So now, yes, it's very crazy. So, um, and this is like, I think the first time I'm officially saying this on anything, but I'm stepping into a season of uh, a role that really the Holy Spirit in me kind of made up in the fashion industry. That is, um, my friend said it as a joke one time who owns a brand, but now it's like actually what's happening. Um, but God has called me to, uh, in the fashion space, be a spiritual art director. So- very being able to say that feels like a dream come true spiritual art director so um what that is is it's it's all what we've been talking about helping designers take a deep breath like and to me it's really changing the fashion space to understand that uh the again testimony the the goal is not just to design a short impactful collection but for you to last as a designer um one theme in art that we see is there's this pursuit of this perfect art, beautiful art, but um, this level of art that has this level of impact has cost people way too much. Practically, Michelangelo went blind painting the Sistine Chapel. He went blind because the paint laying on his back, looking up, dripped in his eyes, and he went blind. Beautiful art. We all love it, but he lost his vision for the sake of other people appreciating his art. So don't let me, don't let me, hey, how you doing? I'm, I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm glad you feel relieved. <laughs> I'm relieved. So, so I have a bunch of friends, a bunch of people, super impactful people right now in culture that have been gifted by God to see uh, in a way that is creative and inspirational, but it's costing them their vision. It's costing them their life. So my role in space in the fashion industry is, is this idea of a spiritual art director that helps care for people's souls, that helps them do it in a way that their friendships and relationships last. Um, and so, yeah. And so it's been, it's been all God of like me being okay with like, all right, God, I'm, I'm good if that vision dies. And he's like, Oh, pet, I just needed to know, like, would you kill it? It's Abraham and Isaac. Like, would you put that dream up on the altar and stab it? And I'm like, I'll do it. And he's like, Oh, okay, cool. As long as I know I'm number one, you can do that stuff. So yeah, like, um, I'm, I'm starting to step into that, which is super exciting. Well, we just want to thank you, the oh. whole generation while you were using the restroom. <laughs> we, we want to thank you, bro. You're oh, pioneering bro. something so beautiful. Um, yeah. you, I do, we don't know you personally, but just from what we have seen, you are you. Yes, and sir. I know that you wow. struggled growing up with some sort of like, I, I would say like an identity yeah. crisis. Oh, 100%. But Absolutely. you are you, man. Oh, and man. It's, it's, it's very inspirational. Thank you, bro. That means so much. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, it, it is, um, it's, it's just, it's birthed out of a genuine place of knowing like, bro, we gotta, we gotta last and we gotta do this well. And we can't just make dope stuff and not last. Cause what is the stuff without you? Like, what is your brand without your soul? Absolutely. What does it benefit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul, lose that his part. wife, lose his family, lose his friends? What's a bag if you sitting there buying stuff by yourself? It ain't nothing. Right. Like, forget making money and having followers. Now you, like, so- for me, it's just like, okay, there's a whole world that we've come to uh, upset. That yeah, is sure. just like, hey, bro, we're going we're gonna to redefine art. Art is not, the highest form of art is not appreciation of others. It's the last thing of your soul. <sighs> that was stinky. <laughs> the highest form of art is not the appreciation of others. 
Appreciation from others, yeah. The appreciation from others. It is the lasting of your soul. Arts killed some beautiful people. Heath Ledger, beautiful role. And Joker, but took him out. Pablo Picasso committed suicide. Like, let's go down the list. People we love, listen to. They ain't here no more. Dang. Art was beautiful. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. I mean, the Dang. list goes on and on. Dang. And for me, it's like, bro, I mean, one of my heroes, and I don't, there's a, Virgil Abloh, even getting sick and passing away from cancer, 40-something years old. It's like, I, that you can't tell me, like, what, like, just... The pace in Paris to Milan to Off White to Louis Vuitton to collab like the speed, the pace, like just it's like there's no way your soul can handle that. And obviously, there's God's sovereignty and plan. And I'm not saying any of that is God knows everything, but yeah, I can see sure. a pattern that just don't make sense with human anatomy and pace and rest. Mm -hmm. And the and the crazy thing we were talking about earlier in Genesis, God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. God can handle creating for six days and then resting. He knew the first thing you get to do. Six day he creates man. Seventh day, lay Rest. down. He started us resting. He can he can pull up on some like, all right, boys, y'all ready? Let's rock. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Gets yeah. to the man and is like. Adam, wake up. So what we getting into? I see you've been, you know, we've been doing the animals. I see God. Okay, well, you about to lay down. Yep. That's exactly right. You about to sit down. Yep. And then after you get some rest. Yeah. Now we can do something. Yeah. And uh, the American dream has sold you on hustle. And then by the time you get, and here's the thing too, by the time you get to the point where you built something to enjoy, you either too dead to enjoy it or you have no programming except for continuing to run yourself into the ground and we just i'm not here for that i think that's why the lord told me um to stop after seven years of planting a church wow because he didn't he didn't want me to do um obviously he always knew this was coming with the podcast i didn't and um uh the 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 truth of the matter is he didn't want me to do both Mm. there's a lot of guys wow. doing a lot of things at the same yeah. time it's yeah. like i'm gonna preach on this day and then i'm gonna go uh do a podcast on that day and then yeah. i'm gonna go do and, and everybody has different capacities so yeah, I'm, not, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm not saying that there's a formula to it but um where is the margin for your soul bro right i'm, I'm not talking about date night with your wife i ain't talking no, no, about no, quality no, yeah. time with your kids where's the margin for your own soul yeah and um uh, like you said earlier, when people ask me, how am I doing? I, I start from my soul and work my way outward. Absolutely. Be like, hey, you know, somebody asked me like, hey, how are you? All caps on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> seems like you want to know. Yep. <laughs> my soul is good. I've been doing this with Jesus. And yeah, then yeah, me yeah. and my wife are good. And yep. it was like this long of a yep. response. And he 100%. was like, okay, I think you're okay. Yep. Yep. So I, I, I mean, I'm all for margin of the soul. And if you don't have margin margins in your soul, yeah. Um, you won't do this for a long time. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I have I have plans for doing this for as long as I preached. Mm -hmm. I'm 47. Wow. So yeah. listen, I'm going to be 70 something like, welcome to the basement. <laughs> That's going to be, bro, when we welcome 70 doing the, the basement. Listen, I promise you, I'm going to be 70 years old whew. doing the basement. Like, okay. <laughs> The people going to have like literally two and a half decades of like anything you wanted to know from Tim Ross. He left you a lot. He left it all. If you want to know how he felt, if yep. you want to know if you changed his mind, start from episode one and go, and go all the way through a thousand and thirty five. Six thousand two hundred forty one. <laughs> I'm out here like Walter Conkright up in this joint, bro. I'm going to be doing episodes for the rest of my life. I, I mean, yeah, I love this. I enjoy this. This yeah, is absolutely. this is I mean, we have to call it work. I'm not working. Mm. Yeah. Yep. I am not working today. No, yeah, bro. I am I am in my passion. <laughs> Literally. Um I want to I want to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Mm. Oh goodness. Because um I I heard My that, wife just gave me a look. She kind of like, <laughs> Uh I, I heard that you had like binge watched a, a a whole like 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 a 
a bunch of episodes yeah yeah and uh your mind was turning so so i'm curious to know just what's on your mind like yeah. stuff you think about oh my goodness um in 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 life and mm. culture in the world outside of church i do want to give people um a quick life hack mm. um uh well i guess i want to give men a life hack yeah um i was going to do a comedy special mm. i'm 47 i yeah. turned 45 in 2020 and uh that's very simple math i don't know why i just <laughs> did that for everybody but there you go um that helped I, me. I I'll, I'll be 48 this year so cool. th there's the there's the math if 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 you need to know like all of it anyway um uh but i was gonna do a i was gonna do uh, a stand-up set um i had got back with my um with with my uh uh, my stand-up comedian coach the guy that taught me how to do stand-up like for real for real he yeah. wrote he wrote for leno he wrote for wow. uh degenerous so um <clears throat> i wanted to do a 45 minute special called 45 mm. right yeah it, it was inspired by bill cosby present circumstances not in, not included yes <laughs> um uh uh it was inspired by bill cosby when he did 49 he decided okay. to do a comedy special at 49 instead of 50 mm. and it was brilliant he mm. sat down the whole time yeah. Yes, it's yep. brilliant. Right? I remember watching that on Granny Dad SS TV. Is great. <laughs> Give us the chocolate cake. Like it's yes. most, one of the most iconic yes. things of all time, right? Yeah. And so um, I was gonna, I, so I was gonna do this set. It was gonna be called Forty Five. I was gonna do it sitting down, mm. but I was gonna do it sitting down on a toilet <laughs> because I pee sitting down. Ah, this is my yes. This is my life hack. This is incredible. This is Bro, my this life is, hack. I'm not going to give it a bill. I didn't know this was the life hack. I no, this is the direction uh, I'm, I'm gonna we was going. You. Yeah, yeah, this is a life hack, bro. So it started because, you know, you get up in the middle of the night, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. you're like kind of groggy. And it's like, I'm not flicking on the light. Yeah, no. Because that's going to wake me up. Take me out of this right? room cycle. And then I can't aim by faith in the dark. <laughs> We walk by faith in that. I've right? been trying though. And 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 the other thing was the 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 splash. The <laughs> These are this is deep stuff right now. Now now, now, now I noticed this more with my boys than me. Oh my, brother. But but like like it's the it's the it's the it's the splash rate, bro. Of like you peeing, but then like you just the urine stream hits the water and then gone little flex just bro. start popping that out like boy, little fireworks, fireworks arlo phoenix metcalf my first and only son when i tell you you would think that we painted the, around the, all our toilets uh, just a light yellow <laughs> brother i walked in the other day and felt like why am i in an inch of water what is what am i doing <laughs> who is and arlo just he just be like baby did you did you pee on the yeah <laughs> yeah daddy oh my god accidents happen <laughs> brother that wasn't no, no, no accident no, this is, that this amount is, of urine this is a purpose-filled life you have right here this is a purpose-filled stream <gasps> you have around here all right. oh so 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 let me let me, let, let me get all the way through the 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 continuum <laughs> yes. of thought right yes yeah, yeah yeah so then public restrooms yeah i have literally walked in to go to a urinal mm -hmm. taken a step and slid in <laughs> right oh, no I have been in urinals. I've only done this one time, but it's still gross. <laughs> Where like you go in there. Now I won't sit down in a public urinal. Like, like uh, okay, not, yeah, I yeah. mean, not. Yeah, well, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. sit down in a urinal anyway. I won't <laughs> sit on a toilet. Now, I don't be sitting in urinals. <laughs> just to clarify, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's that's way different. <laughs> Someone's like, um, I heard Tim sits in urinals. <laughs> don't listen to him. <laughs> but but the but the like if you have one like sandals or flip flops, yeah, brother. Not and today. you feel like a <laughs> like a little micro drop hit your foot from somebody peeing. No way, brother. Two urinals away from you, and you're Ain't like, no that way. wasn't my stream. Is, is this a water ride? I water just ride? walked out with someone else's urine drop on my pinky toe. Not today, brother. Fam, this is disgusting, right? Yep. So I was like, I'm sitting down. Yeah. Bro, I sat down. <laughs> I was so dang relaxed. That's incredible. I thought to myself, why well, have I only sat down to boo boo? I need to sit down to pee as well. I'm never standing up again when I get to my this house. Is Bro, beautiful. I pee sitting down. That was going to be my opening joke. Like after I sat on the urinal, 
and everybody's yeah. like, "What Why? the heck what is wrong?" He I was gonna be like, "I pee sitting down," <laughs> and I was just gonna start a whole little that is literally this a whole little monologue on pee and sitting down. But my boys, my boys pee sitting down. I, I mean, do not let them stand up and pee in my house. I literally, we literally had this conversation with Arlo. I was like, "Hey, Bubba, so we're gonna try something new." Like he's, I mean, three years old, and it's just like it felt like we, it, we, we, we backfired, we relapsed. I just don't know what happened. We was locked in. He was peeing, and then one day we walked in. It was like. That's just a whole. That's a whole pee. That's a whole bladder right there. That's not like, oh man, I was trying to get it. And I no, couldn't. like <laughs> that's like you just because he be he poor baby. He be go, he have to go and he just take his pants down. And then one time I came and he was outside the bathroom, just a whole puddle. And I'm like, but he didn't even make what it. happened. Yeah. And he literally was like, I start and it makes so much sense in the three year old's mind. Like if you got to pee, you could just kind of like, I yeah. He didn't have that muscle. Yeah, yeah. That so muscle. he pulled his pants down and his pants was like, oh, we free? Let's <laughs> ride, baby. And he just started going and he's like, I just didn't know what to do. So listen, I already know. Pee is sitting down. Let me tell you something. That All was, this talk about pee. Now I feel like I got to pee. Now, well, if you got to, then I'll, I'll probably I'll, have I'll, to. I'll speak to your generation. I'm going to go try. Fashion. I'm going to go try your, your system and yeah. I'll report back and yeah, let you know yeah, how absolutely. it goes. I'm serious. I, this is a bladder filled uh, podcast. This is the first time this has ever happened. First time the host ever had to go pee ever. First time the guest ever had to go pee. And this is just what we're doing. But I, but I, for for every guy that's like, this is stupid. It's like this is the most. This is the the opposite of macho. I'll never do this. You're you're you're, you're as weak as I ever thought you were, Tim. You pee sitting down. You you're a B, right? And we know that B that doesn't stand for believer. Y- y'all thinking about the other B? Well, well uh, here's what I want to tell you. Go home, get yourself a sponge. Or a paper towel and just wet it lightly and rub it across the rim of your toilet. And you tell me if I'm crazy. Telling you right now, I'm trying to clean, I'm trying to help somebody's sanitation at their own house. I pee sitting down. I'm proud of it. I ain't taking it back. I don't care what y'all think. Now you know. You probably didn't even want to know. You didn't come to this podcast to find out if men should pee sitting down, but now you know. Some men do. And we're powerful. Sigma male. Are you going to make a comedy special? Um, I wanted to do it in in in. I want. I did want to do it. Uh, like in in 2020, I was I, I was going to do it. I had already um I was working on a venue. Like I said, I got back with Dean, I, and I was getting my reps in. I started writing material again. Um, and I got about. I wanted to do a 45 minute set. So, um, you need a lot of material to do a 45 minute set. Everybody peeing now. Sit down. See see how you feel. I promise you, it's gonna change your life, dog. It's gonna change your. Did you did you sit down? I yes. You did. It was. Let me report back. We're reporting live. You from my first uh, <laughs> conscious sit down pee. We're here with Charles Metcalf. Yes, sir. And uh, it was incredible. I it felt like I didn't. There's a level of thought that I normally have when I'm in the bathroom. Yeah. that I didn't have to have. That was Bruh. able to just. I literally. I sat down. This is a real life experience right now. Bruh. I said, man, God, I'm so grateful for this moment. <laughs> Dude. And I think that gratitude was sparked by sitting down to pee. I promise you. Th- this just in, sitting down to pee produces gratitude in your life. Hey, we're helping people's lives. Wow. We're helping people's <laughs> lives. So uh, 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 Hector asked me about if I was going to do a comedy special. And yes. um, I wanted to, I had a real passion for it. Um, I probably had. I probably only got up to like seven minutes or eight minutes of material, so I wasn't that far. But it was really early on in the year. I wanted to do this in June. <clears throat> this was like February, March, yeah. so I had time. Um, <sighs> but then the pandemic hit. Mm. Second week of March, you know, it, it, um, I was on my way. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you how smack dab in the middle of the pandemic I was. Yeah, I was on. I was in a plane on my way to England. When President Trump, then President Trump said, there's now a band extending to England and everybody must come back home. No, I didn't go right back because I'm not that dude. (laughs) Uh, So I was like, "Mm -mm, I'm going to preach and I'm going to preach. Absolutely. So so they only opened up like 13 international airports in the entire country. Oh, my goodness. And the lines were like 24 hours long. I came back Monday. Guess how long the line was? (laughs) Four minutes. I got through customs in four minutes. That is bonkers. No, no, no. Actually, it was eight. I would have got through in four, but the couple ahead of me had mm-hmm. came from uh, 
uh, France, mm -hmm. which was on the ban list. Gotcha. So they had to go put them in quarantine and then come back and get me. And they were like, where'd you come from? I was like, England. They were like, have a good day. That Eight minutes. Bonkers. Eight minutes. So I'm glad wow, I didn't wow, come wow. right back. <clears throat> so yeah. anyway, now now we know that grown men can sit down Absolutely. and pee. I just I just freed a bunch of freed men. a bunch of people. I freed so many a men right now. A right whole there. generation of men can now sit down and pee with confidence that you are not. Come on, you are not less than a man. Let's free. You some actually people. care about your family. You care about sanitation in your own house. You don't. You shouldn't be peeing on your own feet, fam. No, bro, that's not it. Or your shoes. Or ugh, We're not oh my god, it's not happening, bro. And then, and and then the life hack if you if you if you're married is that your wife thinks he's so considerate the toilet absolutely. seat is always down. That's the truth. It absolutely is, babe. You and I do the same thing. <laughs> we both pee sitting down. We have something. I'm bonding with my wife, fam. <laughs> this is deep. This is deep stuff right now. There's levels to this. Wow, that's the truth. All right, so now that that's out the way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> some with, with, with with that out of the way, yes. um what you want to talk about? What's on your mind? What, 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 what's, what's, what is on my mind? What is uh, grinding your gears, as they say? What Ooh. is what is tickling your fancy? What what <laughs> what is sparking your imagination? What man? What's going on with what's what is it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Oof, I don't know, man. I am a I'm a contemplator, uh, which means I can think a thought straight into the ground. So yeah. I, I always got stuff buzzing through my mind, bro. The day. <laughs> The day I'll start here and we'll see where this goes. The day I text you, mm -hmm. um, okay, here's where we are. Mm -hmm. So the day I text you, uh, we'll go, we'll go super spiritual and it'll it'll lead us to a beautiful place. We, I, uh, I don't know the complete circumstance of how I got there, but I just got like super heavy, mm -hmm. like just spiritually, like two three days before, just was like, what is going on? I can't think straight. For me, like even I go back to talking about being in school and. Uh, wanting to do good in school there was always this part of my brain like the cognitive interest and like just loved researching and gathering knowledge and learning about different things and just have random facts about stuff I was like why you got that like i really enjoyed that part so when i can't uh when my thoughts don't feel like a steady stream it just messes with me because usually it's like i can i'm just going mm -hmm. like uh, I feel like it works like when well, me and the Holy Spirit are lock, rocking, I feel like that movie Limitless where he's just like, yeah, 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 like yeah, that's just sure. how like yeah. when it's I'm into the Holy Spirit, that's how I feel. Yep. So that was just like it felt like I couldn't get going. Like, yeah. And so I'm like, what is going on? Me and my wife very practically have just been trying to be way more conscious of like what God's doing um, practically and what's happening uh, in this stuff people don't talk about at all especially people of my generation, but what God's doing in the spiritual realm, like mm -hmm. what's going on? We got like angels and demons and spirits and just being aware of like, God, is that me? Is that somebody else I'm feeling? Do I need to pray? Yeah. So anyways, we go through all that and long story short, it was me realizing I just had to get the focus off myself. I just worship God in my car. Like, just like I've been stuck in my own, just kind of thinking about myself, had to get the focus off of me. And when I just put the focus on God, like literally we was in a car ride going to get breakfast and we just turned worship music all around. And I just closed my, my wife was driving. I closed my eyes the whole ride. and was just like, God, this is about you. Like, mm -hmm. it don't matter how I'm feeling. You're still king. You're still good. Like you are still just getting in that space. When I tell you, when I opened the car door to my, it felt like, <sighs> like I oh. was going, I was in eight different group texts, friends that are designed. I felt like I was supposed to start this group text with some of my friends who are designers um, to, kind of step into this space of like helping care for people's souls and mm. I already have been happening uh unofficially mm -hmm. but felt like I was supposed to like what could happen if designers had a space where everybody was committed to like ideas everybody was committed to the safety of it and like you could share ideas for upcoming collection get feedback before you put it out to the world like and we all just gassing each other a place to get off some just dope fit pics like yo i kind of killed this look at it like yeah, just yeah, like yeah, 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 just a sure. free space of ideas and to form uh opinions about stuff that's happening like yo what do we think about this like yeah. just getting like so anyways uh i start this group text with my friends and it's just beautiful dudes like and the fashion industry is very like like any space honestly like very cars to the chest like you don't show nobody what you're working on because you don't want to steal it before it comes out blah 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 and I'm like, yo, this is the heart of this, but all friends, but they didn't know each other. So I introduce them to each other. And then I'm like, yo, if you 
so feel inclined, no pressure at all. But like, if you just want to get some feedback, whatever, boom, three dudes are sending their whole coll next collections. Just like, yo, what? One dude ends up changing the whole design based on some feet. Like, it was just my soul was like, wow. I'm texting another friend that works at a company. So, anyways, I text you on some just like, I'm just buzzing. Like I tell Abby, it'll be like, I'm just buzzing right now. I don't know what I'm doing. And so I just get, I just text him. I'm like, yo, dog, we got to talk about this. And I'm like, we got to talk about lust and freedom and being honest. We got to talk about like, you know, people out here cancel people, but God never canceled us. Like, I'm just like, I, I don't even know what I text you. Like, and it's like 30 texts by myself. Like he ain't even responding yet. And I'm like, bam, 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 bam. That's exactly how it was. It was. Like he ain't even engaged in to say like, oh, hey, I'm here. He could have, phone could have been off. Ain't no dot, dot, dots. Ain't no response. I'm out here talking to myself, <laughs> and you just happen to be the text message that is happening oh my in. God. And so I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. And so then Tim is like, yes, absolutely. So he's just down. And then he, so I busted out laughing literally. He said, so did you start a podcast or like, what are we doing? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I mean, I think, I mean, no, I didn't start no podcast. Did I just invite myself to come to the basement? I don't know what happened. I really was, I think I was just talking. <laughs> And then I was kind of like, yo, so anyways, uh, yeah, that's exactly what that's happened. how it happened. That's exactly what happened. Dude. Wow. You're such a great friend. And I'd be like, <laughs> nigga, please, for, a, for, for lack of a better way to say, it, what are you talking about, boy? Okay. Because <laughs> that's how it could have happened. So I know, I think, man, what is it, man? I think, okay, this is something that's, that's in my heart that I would love your, you to weigh in on. I have, we talked about safety. Mm -hmm. We talked about being a safe place to become. And I think for me, part of what I know I'm called to be is, and me and, me and Abby, Abby helped me formulate this, is uh, I said this the other day, that I may have to disrupt your peace to introduce you to the prince of, I may have to disrupt your religion to introduce you to true peace. That's great. And me and Abby together, like we were talking about with our friends and, and, uh, she was like, I feel like Charles is disruption and I am peace. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's literally who we are. Like mm -hmm. I am here to bust up what you thought, but ain't anywhere in the Bible. I'm here to be a different picture for what you think people can and can't do. And like, that's my mode. And my wife is peace. Like personified too. Personified. Yeah, personified. Like just you walk into our home and it's like, what is that? Mm -hmm. Like just friends got in our car last night rental car and they're like Yo, what, what is that? like <laughs> just like that's just who she is like we just chilling and so with that um i've been stuck on this uh of talking about the epidemic and uh pandemic of cancel culture in today's society based off of things that are not rooted in scripture mm -hmm. and or the word of God, mm -hmm. but based off our own ideas that we have created yep. that are not a true reflection of God. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is this journey of trying to step into being genuine to myself, who God's called me to be, whether it's in fashion and how I dress and how I present myself, there have been whole things that have happened and come out of just based off something that I wear and that's just your own like, well, I just feel like you shouldn't be wearing that. Yeah, for sure. And it's created this space where I've realized, like, man, are people, how do we create a safe place for people to become themselves? And this idea of, like, if you're trying to do something that hasn't been done for, for before, finding the assurance in yourself. This is my own personal journey. Trying to step into what I know God's called me to do that I don't, I have pictures of other people doing it in their space, but no yeah. picture in my space. Yeah. And I feel like, um, yeah, it's just this fine line of like I want to be authentic to who I am, yeah. and but I also don't want to just be doing stuff just to be messing with people. But also, I know like me being who I'm called to be is yeah. gonna mess with you, and like yeah, for sure. And so I don't know. This is more so even I'm I'm bringing it to you on the basement for consideration of of how to walk in that in a yeah. way that's healthy that doesn't apologize. Yeah, for sure. That isn't rude for no reason. That yeah. still has grace for people. Yeah. But I've just it's been like from wearing pink to uh i be randomly paint my nails black because i grew up i grew up around skaters yeah, who sharpied sure. our nails every third period yeah yeah and sometimes <laughs> i'm like brother we back and yeah, like yeah, yeah, i've yeah, got yeah. like oh, well, i can't listen to the word because it is just like and there's a part of me that feels that hears me in sixth grade thinking like if i don't see it mm. 
I feel like I got to create another version. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so part of my thing in the space is like, I'm going to help you see it. Yeah, for sure. So you don't have to make the sixth version of you. And you yeah. can say like, well, maybe I can be that. And yeah, be sure. like, maybe I can be authentically engaged in the fa fashion industry. Not trying to be cool or trying to like put on to get people, but like genuinely like it's this a reflection. Genuine, yeah, it's a genuine part of your expression. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I don't even know where that is, but that's kind of that's kind of where my mind is right now. No, how to do that. No, that that's, that's it's, it's a great thought and a great conversation to have, Charles, because um, uh, I talked about uh, I um, I did this pod with Jen um, last year, <clears throat> and I think it was with her. I don't know. It might have been with her. No, 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 no. I think it was with Felicia. <laughs> I think it's, uh, we had a guest on named Felicia, mm -hmm. and I was talking about um, I got punked out of wearing mm -hmm. my favorite jeans. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got basically online bullied you yeah. know what i mean and they were yeah. like your your jeans are too tight i liked where i like a european cut yeah yeah you know Absolutely. what i mean i like it yeah i like it tight through the thigh and tapered down like this mm. reason why i got these sweats on you yeah. know and then um uh, i usually uh get like a, a 28 inseam because mm. i yeah. don't like i don't I don't like a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't want yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I don't want it touching my shoes. <laughs> yes. So you're gonna see some ankle. Yep. Okay. And yep. I put on Nivea. I have yep. Nivea. Yep. Come on. Okay. So is it, I ain't using like cocoa butter or no, you know, some watery lotion. Yeah. It's gonna have me yeah. ashy out here oh. twenty minutes later. I got thick Nivea with almond oil. Okay. So I got a nice we a nice shiny here. ankle out here, yes. right? But this ankle gonna be out. And it was like, you're gay. Like, <laughs> not even like no, I don't like your jeans. Up. You are now you are homosexual. You tongue dudes in the mouth, okay? And you have <laughs> anal sex. Oh, that's where it went. That's the only options apparently. The, the, if you have on these jeans, <laughs> you have sex with boys. There's right? no other consideration. Um, so I'm like. Dang. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, or, or you're effeminate. Or yeah. can we get tight jeans out of the body of Christ? I was like. Yeah. They not, they're fitted. Like you, what you call tight, I say is just fitted. Yeah. Like I, yep. they don't feel tight to me. I'm pretty comfortable in them, right? Yeah. And that was like, and I, 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 I let that move me. Mm, yeah. So what was in me? Yeah. That made your acceptance or yeah disapproval. Yeah. Change what I already liked. Mm -hmm. So I had to go dig inside myself. Yeah. Me. Absolutely. Um. Uh. Then this chain that I have on. Mm, yeah. This was like a huge thing for me. Yeah. Because I. It looks great, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate. I noticed it, it right when you walked up outside. Yeah. It's like okay. Too. I like my chain. I like my chain. <laughs> so 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 here's the story behind that. When I moved here from Cali, I had two diamond stud earrings mm. and a silver herringbone that I really yep. really loved. Yeah. And um, I moved in with my my grandfather's family okay yeah. okay um his his brother and and wife and you know old school right yeah, yeah, yeah. church of god in christ okay yeah okay? yeah and they told me like and dude i had been saved <laughs> a year and a half yeah and so they were like uh if your grandfather saw you with that chain on he'd roll over in his grave and then i had like my young cousins like yeah. eight nine years old saying you don't look like no preacher you a preacher you got earrings in your ear and you a preacher. How you yeah. preaching? I'm like, yeah. ah. so, so, um, uh, I, my earrings came out because I actually, uh, I had to, uh, I had a preaching engagement. I had moved mm -hmm. to Texas, but there was a preaching engagement back in California yeah. uh, that I had committed to. So I had to get back there, but I didn't have the money. Mm. And the Holy Spirit kept saying, you do have the money to get there. And I'm like, I don't have the money. I'm broke, yeah. sir. I don't yeah. know if you saw <laughs> But I don't got no money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you do have the money. I was like, I don't have the money. And then like um, like four days later, uh, uh, one of my cousins came over and another one of my cousins was complimenting her on a piece of jewelry. And she was like, mm. yeah, I got it from the pawn shop. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I ain't never been to no pawn shop. Yeah. And um, he was like, I told you you had the money. Dang. He was like, yeah, it's yeah, in yeah. your ears. Yep. And these were nice diamond earrings, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You had to screw them in. Oh, okay. No yeah, 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 these yeah. weren't from Claire's. 
Okay, you didn't get this for from the guy in the middle of the mall. Nah, 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 fam. Okay, uh, so so um, I pawned those earrings. Yeah, gave me some good cash, and then I got back to Cali and did it. I, but I had my hair and bone. But they kind of like guilted me out of the hair and bone. So yeah. I, I never felt like I was supposed to get earrings again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, but I I wanted a chain, mm-hmm. and I'm like. You know, I don't want nobody to think I'm flossing. I don't want nobody yeah, to think yeah. I'm this. I don't want nobody. Yeah. And, but then I'm like, I want the chain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't yeah. care no. what you think. Yep. I want the chain. It's yep. a nice chain. Yeah. And it's giving me Wakanda vibes. <laughs> Come on. I miss Chadwick. You <laughs> yes. know what I mean? It's all of it. All of it, right? Yeah. And I'm like, it's it's it's. I wanted something I wanted to wear every day. I didn't yeah. want no no gold or something yeah, yeah, super yeah. opulent. Yeah. This was this was silver with black diamonds i yep. wanted it yep i yep. wanted it i'm like i'm gonna get it yep and then and then the holy spirit was like yes you're gonna get it and so i found this place to get it mm-hmm. and it was gonna be like 15 grand yeah and i'm like i told julia i'm getting this chain and she was like 15 g's fam Ooh, hold up a second. you're not about to have a job <laughs> uh let's reconsider this you know yeah. what i mean yeah, yeah and then uh another one of my mentees shout out to yeah. all my R- rory um yeah. Uh, has worked for a jeweler for wow. years and years and years. Yeah, and so yeah. he was like, hey, what chain do you want? Let me see what I can do. Dang. He found a vendor yeah. to go get this chain done for me. Wow. Guess, ask me how much it costs. I want you to ask me how much this costs. And it, and he, and this vendor did it exactly to the specs of where I was going to get it from yeah. for 15 Gs. Tim, I would like to ask you, how much did that change cost? $1,700. That's how much the markup yep. is when you go to a... That's bonkers. Uh-huh. Yeah. I got this chain for $1,700. It's the same exact space, yep. same exact carrots, same exact sterling silver that's as bonkers. I would have bought from the place for 15 Gs. So, so here's the thing, why that story is beautiful and why I feel like we got to create space for people. People see the chain mm-hmm. and think, well, I looked it up. It's $15,000. What he doing with $15,000? Why he... Blah, 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 and go down that whole path. The first root of it is... This, you said it. this is my ch- this ain't this is my chain this is my chain and you if you don't like that i wear chains yes i'm sorry <laughs> so go find a podcast that, that they don't wear chains yeah exactly but it feels like this world where it's like no i'm gonna stay in this world and i'm gonna stay subscribed and i'm gonna be mad about it and i'm gonna make sure you know i'm mad about it and it's like what who is that so that's is that for good for your soul? Whose soul is that? Like to put yourself in an environment to be if you genuinely offended because maybe you feel some type of way. Your great granddaddy wear a chain and now you just anybody wear a chain is devil. You were freed from chains. You were freed from God and he, okay. Here's God the broke thing. every chain. <laughs> here's the real thing. What happens often is we project our internal convictions and standards God gave us to now everybody has to subscribe. So maybe God told you, hey, for you in this season, you can't be wearing chains. Because the last time you were wearing a chain, it was a reflection of the lifestyle you were living. Correct. Blah, blah, blah. But God done unfolded this whole thing to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To you. To you. <laughs> but the immaturity we have is we don't have the ability to hold internal convictions and compassion for other people's stories. Right, for sure. So it's just... Oh, now chains are evil. Yeah. Now anybody who has tattoos are the devil. Right. Now anybody who dresses in a way that I've never seen before yeah. must be in the like. Yeah. And it's like, can we develop a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit where he can say, no, this is what I'm telling you. Yeah, for sure. And you need to obey. Yep. There are seasons where I literally, I remember I was walking out the house one time. We were going to an event with uh with my friend and the Holy Spirit said, take that shirt off. You know, you put that shirt on to get attention. Mm. Guys, I got to run back inside real quick. <laughs> we in the car. Like, I got to go back inside. What's wrong? Just let me run inside real quick. We don't put a black t-shirt on. Yes, sir. So there is a sensitivity to like, I asked the Holy Spirit what I was going to wear today. That's exactly Holy Spirit, right. what am I supposed to wear? Like, yeah. how do I be authentic? Like, so yeah. this isn't just out here because I think there is a space of people who just buying a chain so people feel like, yeah, you see the chain? Right, exactly. You know what's up? Exactly. You, like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. this is a genuine reflection of like, this is me embracing who, like, the yeah, fact I that, just, the fact <laughs> that the Lord, like, like, was so sweet enough to like wow. not only give me the desire yeah of my heart but like the stewardship mm, yeah 
Yeah. I saw the 15 grand mm -hmm. and the Lord was like, yeah, I see it too. You yeah. don't have to pay that for that chain. Yeah. I like guess it's, it's a beautiful thing. I, yeah. I, but we have to, to answer your question. Yeah. We cannot live our lives afraid of being canceled. No. Yeah. Cancel culture exists. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you have to determine what you're willing to risk. Yeah. Right. That's good. Yeah. But once you've counted up the cost. Yeah. You got to go with what's true to you. That's true. Right. Yeah. That's like so good. I already know this podcast is not for everybody. Mm. I know my cadence is not for everybody. The yeah. way I talk isn't for everybody. My humor is not for everybody. My POV yeah. is not for everybody. Yeah. And there's some people I, I've already heard people say that um, I hope he doesn't get invited back to certain mm -hmm. churches yeah because of what they've heard me say yeah on a podcast or a clip yeah, that they've yeah, seen yeah. yeah that gets put out and that's unfortunate yeah but but if if the if the clip offended you maybe i yeah. shouldn't come back to your church yeah like you, you yeah, know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, yeah. Like, no, that's real I, I guess i'm not supposed to preach i'm never yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to preach at everybody's church and if yeah. this pod maybe you like me as a preacher more than you like me as a podcaster maybe mm. you didn't know this side of me yeah 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 um yeah. um yeah was gonna be expressed and maybe that yeah. makes you uncomfortable right yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know to podcast and then to be in your pulpit maybe yeah. you think oh my god now you you know tim said nigga yeah so maybe if i have him in my pulpit maybe yeah. they think i say nigga <laughs> yeah and this and then there's yeah and then now i'm gonna deal with a subcategory of black people that's like i can't believe you use the word nigga like yeah, yeah. like are we not over this word yeah, 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 yeah. And, then, and, then, yeah. and then some people think it's a term of endearment and some yeah, people yeah, think yeah. it's derogatory and then there's gonna be some white people that's like if you if we can't use it why don't you use it <laughs> and, and then it's like <laughs> i had a white friend tell me the other day you know who you are he said gosh i just wish i could say that there's no other word that's as good as that word <laughs> Oh my God! We were it's like my homie. We was talking in like Thank a you Jesus. No, 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 no. My ancestors. <laughs> Hold on, let me cover my homie real quick. Let me let me run it back. It was Abby. It was Abby. You heard it here first. Abby was like, please, please, please. No, no, no. No, me That's and my hilarious. Me and my homie oh my was goodness. joking back and forth, and uh, <laughs> I want to say what I said it was kind of wild, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but I said it, and he was like, he busted out laughing. And he was like, sit down, Hector. Hector just went to the we bathroom. See you, Hector. Hector, sit down. I promise you it's gonna change your life. So yeah, but no, man, I think what you're saying is is so um is so important that we hold space for people to be themselves, hold space for the Holy Spirit to convict us. Yeah. And look at the fruit of people's lives. Yeah, man. Like that's the thing that gets me is like, okay, you can have your ideas of whatever. Yeah. But let's look into this person's life. Yeah. How what do we have any uh, indication other than your own assumptions you've made yep. that what you feel like is true is true? Yeah. Literally, things of how I dress, if I do something, oh, he's gay. You know he got to be gay somewhere in there. I had, like, <laughs> he got to be gay somewhere, somewhere in, in there. there. Just got to be, you know, because he wore an all pink outfit. It's like, okay, that you may feel that. Yeah. What, you entitled to your own whatever. Yeah. But, like, can we, and this, the saddest part of it is, Here's the real deep motivator. It's not even for me a desire to be accepted by man because I had to die when I accepted what God asked me to do. For sure. It is my real life friends mm. who say, man, that's really why I don't really do church because y'all just so mean to each other. This is a real conversation with ouch. real friends. Yeah, I love you, friend, if you see this. That's an ouch. Yeah, that hurts. Straight up. Don't mess with church. Grew up in church. Uh. Grew up church. And the main thing i just can't i'm even open to god yeah like i read about him in the book but i just can't i can't they see there's some of our friends don't go to church don't believe in god like but love them to death dearest friends yeah and one of their main things they see is they see stuff people say about me she Dang. she be the one checking on me Dang. when people start jawing about something i wore and talking crazy christians my atheist friend be like, you good? I see how mean Christians are being to you right now. Oh. Bro, what? That's heartbreaking, bro. And we out here supposed to be, they'll know you by your love? That's not how they know us now. No, like, it's really not, man. And that's the thing that tears me apart is like, yo, dog, this ain't just about your opinion or whatever. There's, 
there's people on the fringe watching us beat our own team while we down and not want to have conversation not want to like maybe there's something new and maybe i have this opinion but my son's gonna need to see somebody who looked different than how my pastor looked and so maybe this is actually an answer to prayer that you needed but you ain't open-minded enough to see that at all and so that's dying and the people on the fringe watching us interact with each other is like i can't really oh dude that breaks i'm, I'm heartbroken literally I, I literally am heartbroken and it's um we we've entertained the thought of doing like kind of like a version of like um i think is it jimmy kimmel that does the mean tweets mm. or that where you know the people will read yes. their no read the bad literally. comments or whatever no literally we thought about doing that but then yeah. we were like butterfly 909 don't need that type of attention we're not gonna <laughs> yeah we're not gonna get butterfly no. 909 <laughs> that type of your attention. burner account that you ain't confident yeah. enough to say it with your face on it yeah but. exactly I, I you know the courageous thumbs are going to be out there yeah it, it does it does um i'm curious when i when i i, I think i have a level of curiosity that mm. i just don't think a lot of other yeah believers have yeah like like when i see somebody doing something that maybe seems to me like off-putting yeah yeah yeah, absolutely because i see some stuff in absolutely. church culture that's off-putting to mm -hmm. me yeah yeah but i think that's different levels right a yeah, very yeah, conservative sure. person mm -hmm. is going to be off-put by me saying penis and vagina yeah, yeah yeah right 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 yeah uh whereas uh, uh, another person might be like and that's yeah. what it's actually called yeah yeah, yeah. You, you know what i'm saying yeah. um I, I i'm i'm like so when i'm off-put by something i'm usually just like curious like mm -hmm. i wonder why they do that yeah yeah, it's yeah. not like damn them to hell <laughs> yeah may the eternal fires of yeah. the lake yeah, yeah, yeah. of sheol <laughs> consume you for all time yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and eternity yeah for infinity yeah until beyond and beyond <laughs> right like i don't that's not the way i am i, I yeah. usually like i'm like oh man that oh my mm -hmm. god that dude yeah, wow yeah. he doesn't get out much yeah like yeah, I heard, yeah. I heard this dude preaching. Like he was preaching hard too, yeah, yeah. and he was like, "And you got people out here wearing beards. There's nothing holy about a beard. We're gonna get back to the real Pentecostal." Ah! And that, and then people in there, all them men was clean shaven, like, ah! and all the women were like, "Yeah, right, bro." And I was like. I'm just curious. Absolutely. I was like, man, this is a very niche yeah. sermon. <laughs> yep. Very niche. It's very American. <laughs> very. Let ooh. And Jesus would have to shave his beard if he came in here. And this is the this is the uh, disruptive news to a lot of people. Is don't have no geographical understanding of <gasps> where that book took place listen listen i said this to abby the other day i was like i need to do some deep research on this but i can highly <laughs> bet that there ain't no white people in the bible well i mean like you the, confirm it like meaning and the sentiment of what i was there saying is was like no caucasians in that book and just that reality of like it ain't never passed your mind when you're reading this book you talking about these people they none of them look like you well, the replacement theology, here's how I knew the book, the, the Bible wasn't written to me yeah. as like an African-American who grew up in this country because Abraham's name was Abraham mm -hmm. and not Diamante. <laughs> like if the, if Genesis 12 would have been like, yeah. and the Lord said to Diamante, get thee out of thy country and thy father's house to a place that I will show you. Yeah. And so... Diamante and Tasha <laughs> left Compton yeah. and by faith yeah. were on their way to Apple Valley because the promises yeah, yeah, of yeah, God yeah. were in Apple Valley, yeah. right? And Jaquan went with them, right? So it wasn't yes. Lot, it was Jaquan, no. yep, right? Absolutely. If Diamante and Tasha and Laquan went with them, yep. and then like halfway there to Apple Valley, uh, they stopped in Pomona, yep. and Diamante was like, look, 
your homies and my homies are beefing. We beefing, bro. Right? You selling t-shirts, I'm selling hats. I don't want there to be no feud between us. So look out you, across wait, the land want, you want, and pick wherever you want to go. And Laquan was like, I'm going to San Bernardino. <laughs> oh, me. I know. want all of San Bernardino. Yeah. And then Diamante was like, fine, Laquan, you can have all of San Bernardino. And as... Laquan yeah. went to San Bernardino. Then the Lord said to Diamante, now look up. Yep. Of every place that you see, every place that you've put your foot is land that I am Absolutely. giving you. As far as Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so deep in the book right now. People don't even know. Right, 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 right. As far as Los Angeles is to the west. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh uh, uh, Marino Valley is to the east, yeah, and Vegas is to the north, which is a different country already, yeah, yeah, yeah. a different uh, state already. If it was that geogra, if it was familiar, I would be like, they writing to me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Demonte, and guess what? Then everybody else would be like, that book would written to me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's so good. <clears throat> this book mm -hmm. took place thousands of years. Before anything we know, yeah, England did not exist. Yep. When this book started, yep, or when it ended, mm. the United States of these Americas did not exist. Yeah. The world as we knew it, completely different paradigms. It's a completely different paradigm. Yet yeah. the book is still alive and potent yep. enough to speak to us today. Yeah. What I've been telling every Gentile I know. <clears throat> yeah is to give the Bible back to its original intended audience. Wow. The book belongs to Jewish people. <laughs> Can Dang. we give Jewish people yeah, yeah, back yeah. their book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we agree it is their book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that we got engrafted into it. Wow. It ain't ours. Yeah, wow. It wasn't even talking to us. Yep. All them promises you go in there and try to claim for yourself, they was not talking to you, fam. <laughs> Bro, this is and this is the thing that the genuine thing is like because of a lack of biblical literacy. It's oh like you don't goodness. even know what the book talking about. There'll be so many things that like if you just be reading the Bible, it's like, oh yeah, that's not how that went at all. <laughs> like that's not Let me tell you something. People be I, I remember I was talking yes, I was preaching yesterday. We was talking about the Garden of Eden. It was like, yeah, if Eve wouldn't have ate the apple, blah, blah, blah. The book says she Isn't turned and handed it to Adam for he was standing right there. That's exactly right. And it wasn't an apple. <laughs> so exactly there was it already ne it never says apple <laughs> we like we talk, but six thousand years of human his apple <laughs> was never mentioned the fruit of knowledge of, of good and evil that was the name of the fruit could have been a kumquat we don't know it was the fruit of not no the name of the fruit was the knowledge of good and evil that was the name of the fruit you have never yeah you've had a banana <laughs> Yo, let me give you one of these window uh, fruit and nuts. <laughs> yeah, bro. It, there was there, we got pomegranates, yeah. we got oranges, we got apples, we got pears, we got plums. Yeah. You have never partaken <laughs> in your life. You have never bitten into yeah, yeah, yeah. the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Yeah, bro. And I think that's that's the thing that's it's a constant reminder why I love the Bible and and digging into the book and trying to understand what does this mean for this time, bro. And this is the thing that got me. I literally I had to go back. I, I was doing this teaching with some of our team and I taught about how uh, the sermon where uh, they, the friends bring their friend up on the roof and they bust the, through the roof and yeah, yeah. lower him in front of Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah, and absolutely. That sermon, all, all the times I'd heard it preached was you got to rip the roof off and you got to do whatever it takes. And I preached the whole, and then I start, one day I was just researching like, what were that size of homes and blah, blah, blah. And literally I read this thing. It's like homes would have built a little smaller with an upper level. And because of lighting, the roof would have been able to be removed to let in light during the day and cool off. The, and I was like, Oh, that whole sermon I preached was not even the right. Like, I be, I'm 19 out here, you know, still looking at porn, writing sermons. So I'm like, you got to rip the roof off. And they had a ladder and they created a police system. And blah, blah, blah. Like, I done made up a whole situation that's like, you made them inventors. <laughs> <laughs> the Imagineers out here lowering their friend. We going to do whatever it takes. Yeah, I don't know. The sentiment of what you're saying is true. But there is oh some nuance gosh. around the fact that it's, there were stairs on the side of the homes back then. So it may have been a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> And it, we're talking about like some grass and some pitch and some mud. Literally. We're not talking about mortar. Yeah. In and my head, they got drywall. a drywall. <laughs> Just ignorance. 
just complete ignorance. Don't know oh nothing. Oh my gosh. Anyway, read the Bible. Read it. Like, don't just listen to it. Yeah. Read it for yourself. Absolutely. Because um sometimes uh when stuff gets communicated orally, mm. that's good. Some things start changing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like when people say, you know, you know the Bible say God don't like ugly. <laughs> Where where they say that at? <laughs> where where did God ever say? Oh, Jesus. You know the Bible said cleanliness is next to godliness. What? What? <laughs> yeah. So no no you're That's good you're absolutely right. I I just this this book was not written to me. I'm I'm yeah. glad I got in on it though. Absolutely. That's that's my that's my standpoint. I, I yeah. don't need to force myself into the narrative. Yeah yeah. I don't need to become a black Hebrew Israelite. Yeah yeah. I'm in the book. Yep. No, I'm just real. I'm just in there. Yep. Because God wanted me in there. And the promise does go back to Abraham. He yeah. said, I'm gonna make you the father of many nations. Yeah. And you'll have so many descendants yeah. that they will not only be numerous in your bloodline, mm -hmm. but if they take the same faith that you've taken, yep. <clears throat> that it will be counted to them as righteousness as well. Yeah. It's really easy to like just go, I'm just glad I got in. Absolutely. Oh, I'm just so glad I got in. As opposed to, I must now, like either consciously or, or subconsciously, uh, with well intention or nefariously, theologically replace mm. yeah. who this Bible was written for with myself. Dang. And yeah. when you can theologically replace it to the point that that Pentecostalism is the 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 crescendo of it is you not having a beard. Yeah, you, you've you've bastardized the text in a way mm. that is so offensive. Yeah, to who the book was written for. I dare you to go up to a Jewish man and tell him to shave his beard. Yeah, yeah, an Orthodox Jew. Yep, yep. So, 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 okay, let me jump on preaching for a second. I can't tell you how many preachers I know whose gospel doesn't travel. Mm, yeah. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Like their gospel doesn't even, their gospel doesn't get past their four city blocks. Wow. Let alone outside of their denomination. Mm. Let alone sometimes outside of the state. Yeah. Sometimes outside of their country. Dang. There are sermons yeah. that are preached in America. You yeah. could not preach it in Brazil. That's so real. You couldn't preach it in Africa. Yeah. You couldn't preach it in Bangladesh. Yeah. It wouldn't even work. No. So when you don't even have like the origin story, the epicenter of the power of the gospel message. Yeah. yeah. You literally <laughs> limit where you can preach it. That's so good. That's And, and I think... That's been something that's even come into how we're raising our kids of, of wanting. I remember like growing up, if you're not exposed, exposure is everything. Like oh, being sure. able to know that like there's more than just what I know and what like. And right now, like we, me and Abby were talking here, we're trying to we're uh, we are uh, the kids. We're trying to teach. We're all trying to learn. I said the kids. We all <laughs> working on our French right now. We're trying to learn French. Uh, and. Part of that desire is I remember going the first time we went to Paris and we're sitting there and we're at this restaurant and the, the waiter is like, it's like four tables and she's kind of in the middle talking to all of them, talking English to us, turn around, speak French, turn to this table, speak Italian, turn around and speak German. And when you go to Paris in Europe and people are speaking different languages, I know enough right now to get me like, hey, how you doing? You got a table or two. Can I get some still sparkling water? And then I'm polyvou anglais. Like, do you speak English? Because that's kind of as far as I go. But the assumption of an American going there is like, you probably know English. Like, just that's our, we assume like you should know my language probably. But it's like, when I saw like, oh my gosh, like why? I don't want to create a world where my kids think the only thing that is real is what is real to me. Like, no, there's beauty in the, like, our, the American church and our little 
continent over here is so small compared to the picture oh of gosh. what God has been doing in the earth. Everybody. For year, like, and just wanting to, one of our friends grew up in Africa and she's helping with some homeschool stuff with the kids. And she's like, I have eight different dialects of my language that I speak. And I was like, talk to the kids about that. Like, I want them to know that like, just because this is your experience and what is true to you does not mean it is the ultimate experience. And like being, that's the thing I think that sadly us as Christians, it's so easy in America, in American Christian Christianity to have such a narrow mind of the Bible applies to me and how it applies to my mindset. And it's like, no one, it was written in a completely different context and time. And we can acknowledge that God is coming back for his church. That's correct. Like, the one that don't speak the language you do, the That's one right. that like you don't fully understand. Like yes. he's coming back for his yeah. church. The one that drinks wine. The the one that grows beards. The one that has a five hour service. The one that has a fifty five minute service. Yeah. Uh the 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 ones that cuss. Mm. The ones that don't cuss. And I and I'm saying that because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh I have a, a a mentee of mine who went to go preach in Scotland mm -hmm. and the pastor got up after he was done and was like that message was effing incredible. But he said the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in Scotland, yep. this ain't, it's, we say F like we say yeah. food. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and um, like there's just so many things yeah. that in our own bubble, mm -hmm. we think this is the yeah. end all be all. Yeah. And if you haven't traveled, um, you, you're, you just live in a bubble mm -hmm. yeah. and it, it you know me going to malaysia and seeing people worship god mm -hmm. in a muslim country wow changes your perspective yeah on worship thing it just changes yeah. it yeah when you're in singapore and you're in a secular society mm -hmm. and going to church is like why would you ever do that mm. but the average singaporean speaks five languages you just leave freaking yeah. embarrassed i i feel no, embarrassed no, literally i'm still yeah. trying to get spanish yeah and yeah. that's connected to this country <laughs> yes. what the hell is wrong with us how no, is this really. not mandatory yeah no really this yeah. was their land yeah <laughs> we're gonna yeah and we're gonna learn their language no yeah so so that american arrogance mm -hmm is very very smug yeah and you don't realize how arrogant you are until you leave the country for the first time that's the you truth. don't realize how ignorant you are bro till you leave the country do you know the first time i knew i was an american mm. this story's gonna blow your mind <laughs> the first time i knew i was an american yeah. is when i went to canada this i i, I know this sounds crazy I think that this is my first international trip outside yeah. of going to the Caribbean. <clears throat> yeah. Because my wife's Caribbean. So we was going to Bahamas and Jamaica. But I had to go to Canada. Yeah. Shout out to my Canadians. So so I write, because um, all I've ever been told in this country is that I'm African American from as long as I can remember. Mm, yeah. Right? All the boxes, are, are, yeah. you, are you Caucasian, African American, Hispanic, non-Hispanic? Yeah. What the hell does that even mean? That's where it's mixed kids pop in. Right, right, right. Like <laughs> Talk about right. me filling out a test. Like, are you black? Are you white? Are yeah, you Hispanic? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I don't know. And, like, if you're Hispanic, why would... It, <laughs> and you... Like, what is a non-Hispanic? Like, that's a... I, I'm still confused. So, so... <laughs> So I write, and, and, and so, you know, yeah. but on the customs card, you, mm -hmm. you got to state your nationality. Yeah. This is so subconscious, bro. I wrote African-American. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, it's my yeah. first international trip, my first cu real customs <laughs> yeah, card. I'm yeah, like, yeah. So I get to the um, customs <clears throat> desk, and this lady is, you know, yeah. and she looks, and she looks down, she looks, she flips it over, and she sees it, and she goes, she looks at me with like disgust and she takes a marker and scribbles through where I, what I wrote and next to it put American, stamped it, handed it back to me with disdain and said, keep your issues in your country. A Canadian woman had to tell me I was an American. Wow. It never dawned on me. Yeah. That I was an American. Yeah. Not yeah. Afro. Yep. Not yep. colored. Yep. Not black. Yep. American. Yeah. That's it. A Canadian had to tell me that. Wow. My goodness. 
Wow. Because America has done a uh, America is the most sophisticated country at simultaneously reminding you who you are and who you're not at the same time. Jeez. My goodness. There's no other country better at reminding you of who you are. Yeah. And who you're not. Yeah. At the same exact time. Yep. Yeah. That is. You're black, you're white. Yep. You're rich, you're poor. Yep. You're in, you're out. My you're popular, goodness. you're not. Yeah. Your value, you're, you're, you're disposable. Yeah. They tell you two things at the same time. Yeah. All day. All day. Every commercial. Every movie. Jeez. <laughs> and that, bro, like. And- I mean, just let that settle, bro. Is that not crazy? <laughs> I was 20-something. I got through a whole public education school system and had no freaking clue. No idea. I was an American. <laughs> Never heard this crap in my ah. life. News to me. Into a Canadian chick told me yeah. at the border. Keep yeah. your issues in your country. Yeah. Shh. My goodness. Mm. My goodness. Yeah. Those 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 types of things are the things that is just yeah, raising kids. It's like I want to raise kids with a wide perspective of the world. A a, a kid that can hold that that's life and world viewed whole space. For different people who are unlike you, who that's great. Believe, that you can learn from. I I heard this random. It's hilarious, but I always say it. But I heard this quote is from Bill Nye, the Science Guy. Shout out, Bill. We appreciate you. But he said, he said everybody you ever met knows something that you don't, so you can learn from anybody. That's absolutely correct. And it was just a, it was so succinctly said that I was like, what? yes, like, and just approaching that with like, okay, I may not know, I may not have been raised like you were, I don't have the background you do, but there's something beautiful I can glean. There's this um this ring I wear, it says find beauty in every moment. And it's just this, it's this lens we were talking about to my friends. Like there's this lens that either, uh, we were talking about the news and Arlo, that's how it sparked Arlo, our little boy. We said something about the news and Arlo goes, what's the news? And we realized like in our house, not, we ain't, it, but we ain't have the news on. Nah, like fam, we don't do that. We don't do that. And he literally was like, what is the, it was just a realization of like, Oh, you literally don't even know. And then trying to explain it to him, I was like, I, I just go very, I'm like, yeah, it's this place where they just talk about people's bad. Like I didn't say, <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> but it was this lens that I was talking to someone else about it. And I said, our family has chose to live in a way that there's always going to be good news, no matter how bad the news gets. And it's I'm going to, I'm going to live in a way that no matter how dark they tell me it is, no matter how bad they say the world is, no matter how separated it's becoming, no matter how many bad, horrible things are happening, son, there is always good news. And the good news is, is that you have another chance because of Jesus. The good news is, is that there's space for you to mess up and come back. Like the good news is, yeah, there are people who make horrible decisions, but there's people who ain't in the public eye that are being faithful. Like we will live in a way that is, there's always more good news. I got a Bible for this. Let's go. Philippians 4, starting at the eighth verse, Paul writes, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Mm. You, 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 you never going to get me Mm. to look at 55 minutes of bad news. Yeah. I want to know what's going on in the world. Yeah. yeah, But after you tell me once, duly noted. Yep. I don't need to watch this four other no. times. You ain't going to have me out here watching CNN for a complete five hour news cycle for you to say the same thing with a different talking head. Literally. You already told me Ukraine yeah. got bombed. Yeah, yeah. I'm praying already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do not need to know more nope. details nope. about what's going on. I get it. They're yep. in a war. We're going to we're gonna let it stop. And yeah. then let me find somebody yeah. who's Ukrainian Lit- bro. Yeah. and help yeah. in a real tangible way. Yeah. But I'm not about to do this for, I, I'm not about to pollute my mind. That's it. And you're going to make me walk out of here cynical at the world, squinting at everybody suspicious. Literally. Y'all are all wrong. The white devil <laughs> is out to get me. No, no, no. There's some racist people in the world. Yeah. And there's millions that are not. Absolutely. You want me to be mad at every white person? Bro. Because of a few white people? You want me to hate every cop? Yeah. Because of a few cops? Yeah. Well, and that just that that <clears throat> that's not happening. No, y'all got me twisted. Y'all read to you do that. I'm not doing that. No, I'm never gonna be as mad at you. No, 
Mm-mm. Is I, I just I, I choose to live in a world where and it, it is this idea of like I'm gonna assume the best I'm gonna assume that like God, and it's like you get because you get a church base we're talking with the friend he was talking about how people like yeah you know I saw there was this demonic spirit and they were blah blah blah, blah. and my friend was like I'd be weary of people who only be seeing demons listen like all you don't you ain't never seen like. I saw, you know, the spirit of peace come in. The, no, no, it's you. There was a spirit of division and de- like, okay, yeah, 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 bet. But like, there's a greater narrative here. Absolutely correct. There's a greater power here. And yeah. I'm going to build my life in a way where my children know and my home is, okay, this may feel like an anxious situation, but we serve a God who is the Prince of Peace. Yeah. So we're not going to be sitting here talking about like, well, we just cast out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, how, how I cast it out is I replace it with a greater reality. Your peace presides here. So when I focus on the peace, I'm simultaneously dealing with that's right, the that petty part, spirit. That and part. so it's just changed. Like, bro, I ain't, I ain't got time for that bad news. No. I'm not going to live in an ignorant world where everything's perfect. No, absolutely. Because it's not. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's duly noted. Yeah. You tell me, like, I took my boys to the hood the other day. Cause I, I I got tired of them trying to. Act that's like a beautiful. That's a beautiful sentence. Yeah, it is. I, I, I can't wait to, to say, say that. Sentence. Yeah, yeah. They they got to the point where they thought they were like real hard. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm raising I'm raising black men. Yeah. And I told them I said um uh you, you gotta you gotta let me know who I'm who I'm dealing with. Mm. I'm either raising black men or I'm raising niggas. <sighs> I said, if I'm bla- if I'm raising black men, mm-hmm. I'm preparing you for the promises. Yeah. If I'm raising some niggas, yeah. I'm preparing you for prison. Jeez. And I'm old enough and have seen enough yeah. where I can get you prepared for both. Yeah. So I took them down to the hood where my dad was born and raised. Jeez. To show them how far we've come in three generations. Wow. From my daddy to me yeah. to where they are. Yeah. And I said, you are three decisions away. Mm. two to three decisions away from this being your reality and we walked around i cannot tell you how sad that environment was wow how run down the neighborhood was there's no grocery stores it's only liquor stores dope boys on the corner prostitutes walking down the street this is broad daylight fam it's three o'clock in the afternoon yeah and um i'm showing them this reality yeah this is real yeah this is what I'm trying to navigate with you all. Yeah, yeah. This is how you got to get your mind prepared. Yeah. But I said, I can, I can jump out of this car right now mm-hmm. and walk up to any of these dudes yeah. and start a conversation. Yeah. Cause it's my default. Mm-hmm. I came from the hood. Yeah. So I can, I can, <clears throat> I can code switch so quick. It would blow <laughs> yeah. your entire mind. You'd be like, is that my is, dad? Is that dad? What is dad saying? Right. I said, would you all feel comfortable if I let you out in this neighborhood to walk three or four blocks? Said, no. <laughs> yeah. my, my, my headphones came off. No, no. Yeah, no, no daddy. That, no, that's, no. How, that's how violently they shook their yeah, heads. They were, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We believe you. We, we, yeah, yeah. Safe. we oh, no, no. We good. We good. We good. Them jokers. I, I, I said, I said, why wouldn't you? I said, why wouldn't you feel comfortable in this neighborhood? And they both. Well, well, Nathan said, he's my 14 year old. Nathan said, because this is not our default setting. I said, that's correct, baby. Yeah. This is not your default setting. Yeah. I said, I don't want you to feel bad that you're an upper middle class mm-hmm. kid. Yeah. yeah. I don't want you to feel bad about that. I don't want you to feel shamed. Yeah. We nobody in this neighborhood wants to be here. Yeah. Yeah. If, if they had a choice, yeah, this would not. They be. would. They would choose a different neighborhood, different amenities, different environment. Um. Um. I said, but they don't have a choice. Yeah. And I said, there's some very good people down here there's some very mm. decent people down here but you don't need yeah a, a thousand people to be yeah. bad for a neighborhood to be bad yeah. yeah you just need like 250 people down here to be bad yeah, yeah. to make the whole block hot yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and, absolutely. And, and, and make an environment that's so dangerous that like nobody wants to be down here you yeah. know nobody feels safe oh, that's real and so um yeah. Uh, like, like giving giving them that mindset and that mind frame to understand, like, yo, God's blessed you. Mm-hmm. I, I I want you to be well rounded. Yeah. There's gonna be stamps in your passport. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get out of this country. You're gonna realize mm-hmm. everything ain't Chopper N L E and Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's real. Right. Yeah. 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 Everything ain't. Whoever these dudes are, I don't even know who yeah, half yeah. these guys are. They're, they're just trash. <laughs> not not them as individuals, yeah, but yeah, their yeah, music's yeah. trash. 
um, um, I, I'm grateful that I'm in a position to be able to mm-hmm. afford because everybody's yeah. not able to afford no, absolutely. to expose their children yeah. to art and museums yeah. and different countries and different uh, uh, cultures. Yeah. But if you don't have that, man, you, you just wind up a very bitter person. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't know if I talked about that. I'm talking so much now. My life is talking, so I don't know <laughs> what I've said and what I haven't. I just know was everybody on this podcast is a- going to be like, we already heard this story. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. You're going to hear it for like the next 30 years. Deal with it. Um, or you'll find somebody else to listen to. Uh, but but um, um, without bees... All the everything changes. Hmm. If all the bees died, yeah, all your fruits and vegetables would suck, mm-hmm. because it's the cross pollinization, yeah, that makes every, everything sweet, yeah. And I think the reason why a lot of these churches are bitter, mm. they've never cross pollinated. Wow. The reason why a lot of these Christians are bitter, yeah, yeah. they've never cross pollinated. The reason why a lot of people are bitter, yeah, they've never cross pollinated. Mm. I would be, I, I would be a really boring guy. If the only people I spoke to are, are black people, yeah, I love my people, yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, I need some white people, yep. And I need some Hispanic people, mm-hmm. and I need some Asian people, yeah. I need some Jewish people, and I need some people from Bangladesh. I got some. Uh, uh, <clears throat> my driver is from some. Uh, it's a bang, uh, no. He's from, he's he's from Bangladesh, mm-hmm. actually, and it's beautiful. Um, got another friend that that's from. Uh, Oh my God, it's somewhere in the Middle East. He's going to be mad that I don't know. But he's a devout Muslim. Yeah. And he, he's closer to God than he even knows. Like yeah. closer to a relationship yeah. with Jesus yep. than he even realizes, yeah. right? And it's like, but if I don't, if I, if that's not my friend, mm-hmm. I can't be sensitive to Muslims. Literally. <laughs> that's such an important thing that we were having a conversation with somebody really close to us that was like, we don't understand why you're friends with them. They're, they're not followers of Jesus. And it was like, this is a, and it was like, wait, wait what, do you, what do you mean? Like, well, I just don't understand why you'd have them in their life, in your life, if they're not. Mm. And it was like, first we had to clarify, like, let me be clear. This, these aren't people that we're making life decisions with, like, not yeah. at all. Like, <laughs> exactly. let me, let me, let me. I do we're not be, going to them. Our for, inner circle yeah, is not like we're having marriage. Let's talk to these. People. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's so easy, especially in ministry and as a pastor, to create a world where you begin to write sermons to people you ain't spent no time with. Like you create this world where it's like, and for me, it's always been a grounding reality for years. Uh, and this is so beautiful to even be able to tell this story for years. I had, a, when we started the church, we started Eden. There was a real person in my mind. His name was Nate, Nate Wood. He was like, in my, this is, I wanted Nate to come to church. We'd mm-hmm. invite him every single event. He like, no, I'm not coming. He okay. came to the very last one. And I thought, perfect, just in time we shut it down. Like, he was like, I think I want to come to that thing you're doing. And I knew, like, it's the last one. But okay, come on. <laughs> he comes, uh, six years of friendship. And he knew, I'm a pastor. He was into fashion and stuff. And he had, had an experience with church. But it was like, that's not for me. But we're just friends. Yeah. Just, let's go coffee and talk. Let's spend time. How you doing? Just years and years and years of friendship. And having him in my life, when I was writing a sermon, I was, Thinking of Nate, mm. if Nate hears this, this, mm. this could be the one mm. where he, Jesus comes through. Like when I'm talking about going through the pain of life, I'm thinking of my friend who yeah, has real pain and has kids that he doesn't get to see and he's trying to be a good dad. But also like I'm thinking of a real, this isn't some ethereal like we had a million people come to Jesus. Do you know any of them? Right. Do you know any of the people on your board in the lobby that says we saw a 50 yeah. trillion like yeah, yeah, yeah. that like and the beautiful is to come to a place the top of last year he's like yo let's go to coffee and he's sitting there and he tells me he got engaged and i'm like oh my gosh i'm like so excited for him and he's like also i thought i should tell you I, and this is probably february i watched your first sunday your first sermon of the year and at the end of the sermon i gave my life to jesus and i start bawling in the coffee shop but like because this was six years of just love. Like, I just love you. I 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 love you. Long I love game. You. Like, Long and game. we have made discipleship and transformation a six week process that creates no space for growth track. 
<laughs> By week four, you should already be plugged into your purpose and know exactly what the Lord wants to do with you. It's like, it's like life don't work like that. It don't. <laughs> like, you My can't God. reverse 20 years of trauma in a four-week course. Like, Sorry. This is not. No. And that's the, that is always. Sounds good, though. Sounds great. Very, very easy to market, mm -hmm. but hard to produce transformation. Absolutely. And having, and when Nate gave his life to Jesus, there was another friend. Nate then moved into the category of the friend I'm preaching to that's new to this. Yeah. So now I have, hit, like, I have these people, like, when I'm doing live, it's like I have my friends who is in this space who don't want, who are almost, like, against God. I have the people who are, like, open to it but just don't really mess with it. I have the people that are new to it. And I have people that have been rocking with him and still need to grow. Mm -hmm. Those are these references in my mind. Mm -hmm. But it's always making sure all of those people. Yep. Have a seat at the table in my life. Yep. The people who get on my nerves because I feel like you're too religious. The people who just was smoking, drinking, sleeping with whoever last night. And I they're like, them. I'm just like, I need all of those people in my not because if I don't have those, it's easy to live in a world where I think that's the only reality. Yeah. Where the only problems people have is like, I'm just trying to discern if, you know, God's saying really I should get this house or this house. There are some people who's trying to figure, I got a friend, Evan Duguid. He runs this organization that is in Tulsa. Um, and every time it gets cold outside, he texts me, man, let's be praying for the homeless tonight. Yeah, bro. And it's just a sobering thought. It is. To be like, I'm out here talking about like, oh, we're going to make milk and cookies with the kids and snuggle up next to the fire. Joker. Yeah, bro. That's not what everybody's thinking right That's now. That's exactly right. It's negative six degrees outside. Joker's out here hoping that they find somewhere where they don't freeze to death. Like, and that... It's easy to live in a world where it's just like, this is my little bubble. Yep. Everything's great. And yeah. So anyways, I love you a lot, man. No, dude, I love you. And I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for this time in this space, mm -hmm. bro. Um, I Man, I love my job. It's beautiful. I, I was sitting here thinking, I was looking at you and I was like, dude, I love what I do. <laughs> um, Because I am learning from everybody. I'm learning from you. I'm learning from... Um. <laughs> everybody's story mm. you, you know what i mean yeah, there's yeah. a different viewpoint and a different nuance and caveat that i'm like oh my god that's interesting i'm gonna be yeah. thinking about that a while yeah um i'm also very hungry i feel that um i worked <laughs> out this morning <laughs> i i, I want to eat now so mama, mama over through the through the head nod on the hungry she's down hey, too let's go eat I got to, we going to feed Abby. Absolutely. We going to feed Abby for staying with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. That's a big meal. We got to, we got to, the woman of God has oh my stayed gosh. when she could have left. She Hallelujah. stayed. She stayed. Um, I love you so much, man. I'm oh, so man. proud of you. Thank, thank you, you for, thank you for giving us the gift of you. Thank All you. of you, the creative you, the singular version of you, mm. whatever you had to go through and fight to get down to that one person we love this charles yeah. we accept this charles and we celebrate this charles thank you uh all right y'all that's it yeah. i love you guys peace